What's up guys and girls? This is the Death Metal Podcast edition of uh we're gonna do like a record label edition where we talk about uh different death metal and some blackened labels. Probably some doom even or, or something. There's even one or two I left out of so I just do uh fix in there midday. Oh damn double talk There's... kid. Even one or two, Hold on a sec. All right, here we go. Stupid friggin' technology. So this is uh, our hundred and twentieth episode, which is amazing. I right, hair in my mouth. The um, we have almost two thousand subscribers now too. We're just like five shy from two thousand subscribers. So if you guys don't subscribe to the uh, Death Metal Podcast, hit it up, man, and then maybe we'll crack two thousand during this episode. So yeah, this whole this edition um, is gonna be just about like record label talk. So we're gonna explore um, uh, what I what I, I I this is. I'm gonna preface this too by saying I don't support every single record label and every single band in this show. <laughs> I I do like a lot of the stuff, but I don't support every, a thousand percent of it. I'm just gonna say that straight up. Um, but we are gonna talk about it because it's relevant to death metal. This is what I just want to let that people know now because you might see something on here that you know I don't support, but I, you know, I think it's relevant to the scene to, um, you know, uh, or maybe they have some band that's question. I don't give a fuck about that shit. But anyway, the uh, this will be just about talking about record labels, bands, your experience. You know, not of your experiences, but like the the friggin' music that you bought off them. Or the ones you watched on YouTube, or the stuff you uh, grabbed on Bandcamp or something. I don't know. Or, you know, uh, you saw Facebook and you follow them, or Instagram, you're following their page and you hear their music like in your feeds and their, their advertisements and everything. So, so this episode is basically dedicated just towards record labels. And the question of the night also is who are your favorite record labels? That's what I want to know. Because that's really what guides this show. It, the, the, the people that watch it and myself, I'm just, you know, the cult leader. And then the rest of you guys are not, you know, my followers, but like user cult leaders too. So like you're going to basically help me uh, as, as a, uh, as, you know, we're going to sacrifice <laughs> together. <laughs> so tonight, um, you know, I want to hear from the, everybody in the chat and stuff, like what regular labels are you into? You know, if I don't talk about them right away, it might mean they're on deck. So just keep that in mind guys. It, so you don't have to tell me over and over again or whatever. And, uh, I don't know why I moved into the show a little nervous, but, uh, there was a lot to, there was a lot to take in, man. I have to say. What's up, Thunder Truckin' Willie? Uh, uh, Jesus Drinks Jet Fuel, Aaron. Uh, Tabba Joe is ready here a half an hour early. Six shirt, thank you. Yeah, yes, yeah, Undergang. I'm back for the attack for day two, exactly. So, hello, Leslia. Thank you for supporting and posting our link in advance. So, you know, the, for Death Metal Podcast, that's everything, man. So, I mean, if anyone could do that or whatever... Share the show on your Facebook or IG stories or something. You just like share the link from YouTube. And then, you know, like a screenshot. It takes less than one minute. I showed my friend in a video the other day. And then if you want to support uh, Death Metal Podcast directly, it's necroharmonic.com, my record label. We don't take free chats and requests and all this type of shit because I don't, I don't want to be, I don't want this to be some payola game. I, I want, I'm not even here to promote the record label. I'm just here to promote death metal and brutal music. And I, I, I don't care about even if anyone buys anything at all. I just want to do a show. What's up, man? So we're going to probably talk about your label too, my man. Um, even in, uh, Evan Williams, Evan Williams, a connoisseur of record labels. So tonight, you know, like there'll be a talk of just a little bit of music. I have a bunch of record label stuff lined up. And then we could talk about the releases that they did, and uh, hopefully everything's cool, man. So yeah, so we're I'm, and then I'm, again, I'm gonna try to like um, interlace some of the comments in between, so I don't get too far out of whack. Ken's Death Metal Crypt does give good reviews, man. Ken is awesome, dude. Thank you. It's it's a pleasure for me that you support the show. So that's kind of cool. What's up, Rob? Little peep. 
little peeps in the house. I think he's back alive. I'm not sure if he overdosed on uh, codeine or something. So uh, today is the the episode is going to be dedicated just towards record labels. I don't know. Like I'm not going to do it chronologically. I'm just going to do it as like uh, you know whatever. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just on here, you know. So what's up, T Bone Savage? What's up? Uh, Descend into the absurd. From the UK, I believe, right? So you know, we they, we have we're gonna talk about some UK label. My mouth is dry as shit. Um, so uh, tonight, is, you know, this is the record label edition, and then basically, I wanted I I downloaded and snapshotted and did all kinds of stuff that have to uh, do with this to basically, you know, kind of um, the best place for that I had looked that had like the most like illest information wasn't the band's web wasn't the company's websites some on, some record labels only had company websites but the best information came from Bandcamp because it had a d lists of every freaking release on there and everything so that's basically we're going to work off that and uh so and again i want to just preface this by saying i don't support every single thing on here you know i just want to talk about music and I'm just happy to, t uh, you know, share it with other people. And that's it, you know? I don't support 100% of the things I saw here. But I figured there was a couple in on here that I completely thought were still relevant to the scene. But I'm not going to hold any kind of biases. Because I'm not, again I'm, I'm, again, I'm not paid to do this. It's just to talk about metal and death metal. So that's it. So it's death metal podcast. If you can share, comment throw a like, um, all that stuff, follow, subscribe, blah, 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 blah. So tonight, you know, um, try to have fun with this. What's up, uh, uh, Sylvester? How you, how you been, brother? Um, tonight we're just gonna have fun with this and, uh, just, you know, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just here to freaking talk. So, um, so let's go, let's, let's just go down how, you know, how, how I was grabbing them too. So we'll go back. This label's been around for a long time. I remember this dude used to write, when I used to do merchandising for Waking the Cadaver, he was a little kid with a bowl haircut. And he used to write to us and buy off us. And because um, I helped like do their merchandise back in like 2007, 2008. And then he started his own record label eventually. His name is Denny. So his label is, whoops. Brutal Mind Productions. So they specialize a lot in like slam beat down, gory cover, you know. But they'll put out some like legit shit too, you know, like Awaken in the Cadaver. You know, they basically um, you know, some of the bands you could see here like uh Endless Outrage, Necrophiliac Beatdown, Death Vomit, Flesh Mangled, Virologist. The guys are really into shirt making and when they make shirts they'll make like they'll make like five like 15 shirts of like one band like gore gore gorgas uh gorgasm or something you know so yeah this is this is gonna be a fun show so what's up chatters exactly <laughs> how's it going 1 a.m in the uk how to, uh having a few uh pints so, um, how's it going, everybody, tonight with this impromptu... Well, it's not impromptu because I, I got I did get things ready for this. So, you know, like, with, you know, again, Brutal Mind Productions. This was, like, kind of a... You know, they're, they've been active for years, but the last few years I've been seeing they've been pretty active. And I've known Denny for, like, a million, million years. So I thought they definitely, de you know, developed a lot and de deserved to be included in this awesome death metal podcast so let's see what else we got here so we're gonna go to texas because everybody from texas uh seems like they'll go and sign to this record label and um also they're uh cool dudes uh they put out a lot of cool releases and have upcoming ones they've been comrades which is good you know because in in also in the record label situation and scene and all this there's a lot of like uh, I don't know what you call it, um, backstabbing, <laughs> something, you know, some kind of word I don't, I don't really understand, or just competition, competition sometimes, so, you know, I mean, but me going on here, actually, you know, I feel like I want to break down the boundaries of, like, competition and all that shit, like, 
we're on here. We're all, we're all broke. We are no one here. No matter what I show here, besides like one or two labels, one label, I think, you know, two labels, um, we're broke. <laughs> so basically, you know, there is no competition. We should all, you know, at least make money for our bands, for ourselves, for the productions that we make. That's it. You know, there's no money to be made in being a record label. And also there's too many record labels. So I'm just going to throw that out there in the beginning too. So up next, let's see who we got here and what we could talk about. You know what? We're going to play some music just to pump up the <laughs> pump up the crowd. Enjoy. <laughs> Icebreaker. So, what's up, Hales? Kyle P. How's it going? Um, Doom to Obscurity is doing good stuff. Cool, man. I actually had uh, pulled down something. I, I like uh, if if you guys are into um, you know uh, finding out about new music, you it can't you can't get hurt if you go on Bandcamp and you just hit the word follow, because basically they'll send you emails to death about the record labels. So you can kind of find out about all kinds of cool stuff. I mean, there's a few record labels that have mailing lists. There's a few that have other things going on. But following bands, uh, band camp uh, labels, you can find out a lot. We'll talk about that in a minute. So the label I wanted to talk about before with the Texas bands, Goat Throne Records. 
So they've been very busy putting out Hexea stuff, Double CD, uh, the Ruin, ETD, Nefarious Mains tape, um, Vacuous Depths. Just a lot of really tight, uh, good death metal stuff. You know, they uh, Infestation of Evil, also from Texas, which is our sick band. And then they have other releases, too. Sadistic Force on record. So, you know, this band puts out tapes and records and CDs. Uh, they had done an Imprecation box set uh, recently, which is, might have been sold out. And then um, ETD and Vacuous Depths, all sick, exactly. And then, um, hello, stolen vinyl. <laughs> uh, so tonight, you know, we're just, you know, I want to support and look at, uh, you know, this is an overview of like death metal labels. I, I, and it's not, you know, it's not all encapsulating because there was so many. I, I did a bunch that either I knew or just I thought were popping, you know, that's the bottom line. And then also I, I, th I did a few that I thought were different too. Like I said, Bandcamp, right? You know, if you follow stuff on there, you can you get these messages from uh, record labels. So this would be an example of one that just came two minutes ago that I was like, you know what? I think they deserve to be on the show, even though they're not death metal. They are a record label. And I think death metal fans would enjoy them. And even if you want to sound sample anything on here, Bandcamp. I'm not a sponsor of Bandcamp either. Library of the Occult. <laughs> So this is a, a record label that puts out like vinyl and like all these like really cool like audio book type things with like sound effects and stuff. So they'll do like Edgar Allan Poe and they'll do like, they do some next level stuff though. So like it's not like just Edgar Allan Poe. They really will come with some really dark, kind of like Halloween type stuff. Uh, I think they're very worthy of a follow up, um, you know, even if you want to just enjoy listening to like a 20 or 30 minute, like, you know, like a, like a story, like a dark story or something, kind of like an audio book, you know, got to grab that Hexaea Wolf, Wolf Skull, H-Town, definitely dude, Texas. So like I said, I'm going to go back to that again. Um, just this just, just hopped up in my thing right now. And I, I check this out occasionally. I don't look at everything, but Library of the Occult. <laughs> so it's like an audio book kind of record label -y thing. So it's kind of cool, man. You know, if you were, And they sell their stuff on vinyl. So if there's something that's so tight that you have to have it on vinyl, they, they, they sell out too, man. They sell out. So um, let's go to a, a death metal label since you guys are thriving for that. Mi Saka Unu Aju Records uh, from UK. They have been destroying it, dude. They have like put out so many sick releases over the past so many years, especially from 2022 to 2024 and before that. But if you look at this lineup right here of some of the releases... This is a lot of really tight stuff here, you know? Now, I'm not familiar with Engulfed. They're brand new. So, but judging on the rest of their lineup, <laughs> you could probably say, you know what? This might be a record uh, label that I could get behind and buy their stuff without even hearing it. Because uh, they have Carcinoid, Degraved. I, I love Goshudar, personally. Uh, Cryptworm. That I know that label, uh, that that particular record made a lot of buzz. Uh, Corporalith, uh, Septage, this the classic Transgressor from Japan uh, with members of Anatomia. Uh, original, they were pre-Anatomia. Uh, Reverence of Paraxium, Undergang. You could never go wrong. And uh, I see a Destiny down there, which is curious to me. So I mean, this label. This label, uh, you know, they put out, yeah, no, all killer, no filler stuff. So a lot of solid shit on here. Yeah, that's, I mean, this show is going to be about solid record labels. One of your favorites is Miyasaka Uju. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it completely straight, but uh, uh, Jesus and that label, they're tight. <laughs> they put out tight releases, man, you know? So, like, that, the bottom line is... Uh, you know, and just that lineup alone right there, you know, that was a lot of that was done within like the last two years or so. 
So, I mean, between 2022 and 2024, like, that's the basis of the show. I wanted to try to keep it in that zone, so I try to keep it in that zone as much as I can. So many labels out there. Yeah, wait wait till this episode keeps going, man. There's going to be a lot to this, because basically, like, I was copy and pasting one label thing after another. Dun, 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 dun. There is a mil- There are a bazillion labels. There's more labels than there are fans, basically. So tonight on Death Metal Podcast, we will expose as many as we can. So let's move that one up to the top. This is like an old Jeopardy game. Um, if you want to support my record label, I'll just throw that out there. We got Evoken shirts uh, for sale. Uh, uh, three different long sleeves we made. Um, so if you want to support, we made Shades of Night Descending shirts too. So just to throw that in there shamelessly as a plug. The, um, so we're going to go on to, yeah, someone mentioned this, uh, other label being a banger of all bangers, Dark Descend Records. So yeah, they share, um, some bands like with Amiya Asaku, Asaju, but then they have their own bands too, Spectral Voice, you know, uh, Phobochasm, uh, Morpheus Descends, uh, releases they've done. This label has done like three or four hundred releases, basically. And a lot of the stuff that comes from this record label is kind of like, I don't want to say similar, but you probably know what you're getting. Demon C, you know, you're getting black. Usually you're getting like death metal and really tight death metal and black death metal, you know, with a good, nice cover. You know, you, I mean, obviously, it was cool that he put out Jim Jones and the Kool-Aid Kids. I guess maybe he grew up with that. Because that's, like, something that uh, is, like, an old-school release. So, you know, I think Dark Descend uh, was definitely, um, you know, they're, they're definitely a sick uh, label. So, amongst labels to talk about, they are one of them. What's up, Nevermore Rules? How's it going? So there are more labels than bands. I agree with that too. Hit the like button. And then um, hit, you know what? Hit the subscribe button so we can crack 2,000 subscribers. So if you don't subscribe to the show, it'd be cool that we get five more subscribers. I'm sure we probably won't during the show. But it's like uh, the bottom line is we're here to, you know, show other record label stuff. And this is not paid. This isn't paid advertising. This is just us talking death metal to other fans so i want i do do want to i do want it i want the fan input if i don't talk to your thing immediately don't feel offended because there's a lot to go through here you know so i mean i i don't want to you know i don't want to exclude anyone but uh, so i'll do my best to basically mention blood harvest records that's something i was trying to think in my head but i had not pulled up a piece for them but uh, yeah, Blood Harvest was a good one, and definitely on the level of uh, Dark Descent Records. So let's go. Let's go down the alley to the next death metal uh, combat zone. So move this into the chamber over here. So we're gonna hop around a little bit. So uh, Nuclear War Now Records. So this band specializes obviously in vinyl mostly, and then um, they are currently trying to build a. a a, a record pressing plant and they reissue and release a lot of older releases like that fingernails is an old one what they do is a lot of times they'll kind of you know repackage and put out uh old releases with new covers on them at points and then other times they'll use the classic cover like those bottom order from chaos ones right there and then um so they had you know they have been movers and shakers in the scene for like 20 something years they got a lot of good releases you know they put out a lot of uh underground blasphemy records beherit you know cassettes even as time went on um at some point you know they kind of they kind of got uh, revolutionized a little bit of like the whole like vinyl patch pin kind of poster shit you know so that was, I mean, that was revolutionary at the time. And then um, at the same time, you know, that you know, now they want to uh, press records. So to them, I wish you luck, man. I hope you guys are plastic engineers, because basically that's probably going to be its own thing. Um, you know, definitely nuclear war now. Nuclear war now gets a lot of your money. <laughs> cool uh, fingernails rules. Definitely, definitely. 
he put he put a lot of black metal on he did he did Nuc uh nuclear war now start in helios press so let's see what else we got here nuclear war now is damn good definitely they're in texas right now and um yeah somebody was saying also blood harvest is good so yeah, uh, I, I was berated by someone recently for not supporting the Helios Press fundraiser. So was I, so was I. So um, Nuclear War Now, Reliable, and own a, a lot of stuff. Dark Symphony, The Crypt re reissues also rule. Yeah, I didn't touch that one actually, I, I forgot about them. They, they, yeah, they have some cool stuff. So let's go more into the modern school right here. This will be a little uh, more modernistic, you know. Um, if I hope, I hope some of you are familiar with it because they put out pretty tight releases. Frozen, Im uh, Frozen Scream imprint. This is like a, a label from New York. So some of the releases you see here: Combat, Caveman, uh, Left to Rot. Um, they put out stuff by like Ruin and they put out like really interesting and uh, complex like box set kind of things where it'll come with like all kinds of like cool like little extras and patches and all kinds of like real customizey stuff you know where it's yeah it's very like um it's, it's very like interesting to get a package from them they've even put out VHS uh, they put out that Splatterhouse discography. So shout out to Tim from Splatterhouse. Uh, so that's on CD, actually. I have a copy of that Tim sent me from his label, which we'll talk about soon. Um, you know, they this is a pretty interesting and cool label. Uh, I, I bought stuff from them from Bandcamp. Um, they were, you know, they were definitely uh, interesting packaging, I have to say. Like, some next level packaging. Splatterhouse was cool. Yes, definitely. Ruin, uh, shed, bloodshed uh, all over. Uh, screwing. Uh, yeah, exactly. Definitely, dude. We're talking. We're going to talk about them soon. You're not familiar with them. Okay, well, there we go. Nuclear War put out the first Die Hard editions I ever came across. Really? I mean, there you go, man. They were definitely making some kind of splash at certain times. And they're still busy today doing things. So let's talk about the next record label of the night. Um, we're going to talk about Head Split Records. So Head Split Records put out a lot of releases. They're putting out a fanzine as well. They put out a newsletter. They're a distribution. They're cool. <laughs> they are, you know, they put out some uh, mixture between death metal, grindcore. They'll put out some heavy metal stuff. They might put out mentors or just so many different releases and uh they seem to be primarily a death metal record label and um disgustor uh is an awesome uh dude you know runs a cool distro uh plays in a cool band puts out he it says mostly tapes but he's starting to move towards cds and vinyl and then uh head split sent me some badass shit exactly and it's nice to get um you know a record label to send you badass shit roy much respect you're a stand-up dude you don't smudge labels even though you have been pissed off by them and that's not professional exactly because that you know why that's why even though i already talked about a label on here that i really don't support um i'm not gonna I'm not going to deny that they are a driving force in the underground. Like, that's just stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, this is not, th that's not the purpose of Death Metal Podcast. The, the, the purpose of Death Metal Podcast is to support death metal. So, you know, and you guys being here to talk about things is important. And you guys are supporting it too. Because I'm putting these comments on screen so other people could talk about stuff. Love receiving the head split, head split newsletters with my uh, orders. I've ordered from Head Split a bunch of times. Great label. That new posthumous uh, regurgitation sounds great. I'm a stand up fella. Thank you. I mean, this is, you know what? I, I have to be honest with myself. So the, the bottom line is in the long game, this video stays up here when I'm done. So, like, if, you know, I mean, I'm going to express a few opinions about things. But to be honest, like, I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to be your typical YouTuber that comes on with negative opinions and hot takes about negative bullshit. 
I want a positive experience from people that listen to music because that's what got me into it. Not a bunch of negative shit. And the whole negativity that's in metal in general is ridiculous. You know, you got this group crying about AI. You got this group crying about some race thing. You got this group crying about whatever, you know. And I mean, I have feelings towards all those things. Trust me. You know, I have feelings towards friggin' people with their rights and their pronouns and all that stuff. So, like, I respect everything, man. I just, if you show mutual respect towards everything and don't take a side in a way, <laughs> your life will go a lot easier, you know? I mean, voting, all that shit, who cares about that stuff? The bottom line is we have tapes and we have music and we have things we can escape from that stuff. So we don't need to care about social media fucking groups and bullshit this is you know by collecting records collecting records and listening to music is what got me out of trouble in life it's what made me not do drugs because i spent all my rec money on records and you know what buying stuff too buying physical media it's like making a fucking stock market investment sometimes. <laughs> it might be more profitable than a stock market investment, in my opinion, just at my age group. Because I realized that the, uh, a lot of things hold very good value. And the more rare and the more you spend for them in the beginning and the more obscure they are. And if you're right on point buying that shit, if you really are in a tight bind and you feel that this band or this label or something, you want to move on from it and you want to sell their stuff, you know, maybe you don't listen to it anymore. Maybe your car payment needs to be due. The, the stuff that you buy physically, it it will help. It would it's it's like better than a goddamn stock, dude. I have to say, man. Social media ain't on that junk. Good for you, man. Fuck politics. We have death metal. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna talk about them too. 20 bucks spin. What's up, Evan? I uh, still have my first tape from Head Split put out. Good stuff through the years. Karen, uh, Roy, uh, when I first met Roy like a freshman in high school, you were the one that got me into lots of good music. I'm sure you did that for many. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate it. Uh, it's nice to see you in the chat here. I saw your brother and was in here earlier, actually, too. So he, he pops in the chat every time. So, yeah, I mean, I, I have been, like, for since, I guess, high school, you know, or before, maybe. I think I think since five, fifth, sixth grade, you know, I've always been the purveyor of, like, hey, here, you know, like, here's a mixtape of some stuff that you will like. <laughs> you know what I mean? And back in the day, we would do, like, cassettes, you know? So, like, it's like, you know what? Here's some music that you would like. And, and, and in a way, I'm sure that brightened a lot of people's day. And then on top of that, it made people's history courses change. And in our town, people like Karen know that there's bands, like there might be band members from, say, uh, Vinnie Verke's band, Evoken, where I introduced those guys together. The guitar player, that Nick, who also went to Kearney High School with me as a senior, not a senior, as a, as a freshman, he went to Kearney High, and he was in Funebrarum, Evoken, and so like and then um i introduced him to vince and then next thing and years later they got a band you know bill vennard from disma was in incantation i had introduced him to john mcintyre so basically the you know the bottom line is that uh, you know getting people into music is cool and that's why we're doing this show too so i just want to um i want to you know spread the spread the message about uh good music you know What's up, Worthless Endeavors? We used to crank Richard C. from Wild Rags just to bust his balls. Well, I think you might have been calling Mike from Ruin because he said that people, uh, what do you call it? Bill Venner is a superior guitarist. What's up, man? That's what's up. Bill does write amazing riffs. What's up, Nicholas? Um, some of my personal favorite, Colupsomy Media, uh, Global Spermageddon Productions for releases, Uncompromising Grind and Death Metal. Cool, man. I didn't have that one on the list, so definitely cool. So let's move this up this bit. And then next label we're going to talk about. Um, let's see here. Gurgling Gore Productions. So this label is pretty busy, man. You know, they stay busy between putting out Gurgling Gore music and um, shirts and stuff. 
and they put out a lot of really tight bands dude like they've put out like multiple like really nice cassette tapes and then uh some shirts and stuff so you could see on what would be their new stuff right here they use a band camp now but i guess i think they got sick of the band camps uh fees so they've now moved straight to a website which sounds kind of almost necroharmonic-y as well. <laughs> because it's being, you know, anything that sucks fees out of you is not is sometimes not worth it. But it is nice to go on there and stick your music on there of your bands and help your bands out and support your, you know, scene. So their new releases being uh, Dysmorphia, Ex Ex Explosion, Repugnant, the uh, Anatomia, Eternal Rot Split, um... Dysmorphia, uh, Unholy Sickness release, Rigor Shot, and then uh, Body Apparition Science. But these are just the, the crack of the surface because they have other way booked out releases. So you should definitely check out uh, Gurgling Gore Productions. They are on Bandcamp or you could check their website out actually where it, probably for a lot more. Um, they put out a lot of limited, rare, kind of like you know, like, I don't want to use the word boutique, because that sounds like a Paul's boutique, you know? You know, call to Brooklyn, you know? So, but, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, the, the, there's certain labels that are a little more, like, you know, like, they get a little, you know, nicer with the packaging, let's call it, you know? You know? So, they, I don't think they're at that full, like, level like that, but they're pretty goddamn close. And then the music's good, the label owner's cool, so all that's helpful. You know what I mean? Like, it's helpful for me navigating it with my record label, basically, because I want, you know, I, I navigate with the other record labels as, as best I can, you know? And I mean, to keep it honest, I mean, some of them are not easy to navigate with. That's a cool name. Yeah. Daddy Gore. All the dysmorphia demos slay. Daddy Gore puts his love into death metal releases. He really does, dude, you know? So what's up, uh, 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 uh yeah <laughs> so what's up justin how's it going man um let's see here can you guys throw or list names of new bands so we're gonna everything we're gonna be talking about we'll have band names and stuff yeah daddy gore definitely check out his uh bank well you can go to Bandcamp and look up gurgling gore but you just search gurgling gore in, in google or something and then he has a cool website and his stuff sells out actually pretty fast so death, going down the uh, party line, let's see here. Let's see. This is a label that's uh, pretty new, so you know we're trying to go back and forth a little bit. Gurgling Gore has been doing things like three, three years, maybe four years. So there's been a couple labels that have been like popping out as shadows, pretty hard and fast. Uh, this being one, Satanic Royalty Records. They had put out a uh, release uh, with uh, Dripping Decay. Uh, and we had those guys on here at some point. Dripping Decay. They, uh, this release, Festering Grotesqueries. A phenomenal cover, man. And then they put out a cassette too, Dripping Decay. Uh, Ripping Remains. I just got it recently. And some other bands you see here. Um, I'm sorry. Besatin Funeral Wreck. Uh, Abyssal Sidarity. And then uh, Rat King, Psychotic Reality. Again, if you guys, uh, the Hero is Gone tribute. Okay. So, I mean, if you guys want to check out the tunes of these record labels, Satanic Royalty Records. So, that it'd be interesting to check out, you know. Not familiar with the rest, but Dripping Decay kicks ass. Definitely, dude. So, I, uh, you want to snort the screen. Cool, man. Dripping Decay. Would love to see them live. I, I did, yeah, I would too. They, we had, um, we had a live thing on here one time. So, definitely. Uh, so, yeah, the demos are, uh, of Dysmorphia. I'm going to have to check those out after this. You know? I'm not familiar with Bibles. <laughs> so, um, tonight, uh, this is our record label edition, you know? We're going to play a song, and then, um... The way I get my voice a break. Uh, this would be uh, old band. This is something I'm not gonna actually put out actually on Necroharmonic. <laughs>
right. There you had Putrefact, which is actually a pre-incantation Craig Pillard. Uh, he sang on the second song, but he's not the main singer on there. The main singer was uh, uh, the drummer. His name was Omar. And they were from Patterson, New Jersey. And I would go to their practices, too, a few times. And also uh, Victor from Ceremonium, who formed Ceremonium, was in uh, Putrefact. There was times when Victor didn't have a bass amp, and he would play the songs along on bass without the amp, dude. Any word on that? We uh, got to work on it, you know? It's just uh, got to, it's in the pipeline. So, you know, as a record collector, too, I wanted to bring this in a little piece. As a record collector, sometimes our tastes are a little eclectic. So each one, each person is, like, different with the record labels. So they might not just care about record labels. They care about the records, and they care about the bands, and they care about the important stuff, the music, you know? So I wanted to bring just a couple pieces right here that, like, are things that I bought maybe in the last, like, two years or something. Pretty, like, some far out and some understandable. Uh, Lord Goat, which is Gore-Tex. Uh, he used to work for Necroharmonic years ago. But this was a, a German release with a fake OBI strip. But this was his new, uh, new album. So it was pretty sick. Ill Bill all over there. Vinnie Paz. Limited number seven I got on the Lord Goat. But, uh, yeah, I mean, this was a vinyl I scooped up because, I, you know, I was involved with uh, Lord Goat. And also, I like the music still. I'm a fan of it. So, support. <laughs> support the label. Uh, I got these two records from uh, David from Undergang when Undergang played their show. Undergang. Vinyl. So, extremely rotten. We're going to talk about that more later, though. So I don't know if these were Mia Osako or Extremely Rotten or a combo, but he hooked me up with a few other ones too. So Under Gang Vinyl. These are my more requit, you know, like last couple year acquisitions, according to the show too. So this one I thought was a, a really cool one. Creep Purple Productions. I, can, I have to censor the cover a little bit on this one. <laughs> Uh, Electric Wizard LSD. This is just like a one unreleased song. Uh, Lucifer's Satanic Daughter. So basically, this was like a soundtrack song that was like an unreleased uh, soundtrack song. And then they have like a live song on the other side. But cool vinyl. Rare as most Electric Wizard vinyls are. Only one of the newer Electric Wizard records. Like probably the newest in a way. And it's a couple years old now. But uh, it was a cool pickup. Um, Creep Purple Productions. Electric Wizard. I like Electric Wizard. I've been a fan of theirs for a while. I don't have all their vinyl because they're super expensive. But there's also this stuff. There's been a glut of bootlegging in the uh, Death Metal Underground. So you see stuff like this. <laughs> uh, fuck with Gore-Tex and nonfiction. Hide, cool, man. Yeah, I used to hang around with them and stuff. <laughs> so, you know, like at times I used to hang around with them, which is kind of weird, you know, to say that, like, as a death metaler, you know. But, I mean, I would go to their shows and, you know, Gore worked here. We did a small tour that was nothing. You know, uh, the wizard rules? Fuck yeah, dude. And then... That's a rare that's a rare one. So let's talk about this though as a record collector cuz this doesn't I don't know if this I don't know where this fits on the record label like you know the record label list but you know uh bootleg you know records and stuff you know like morbid angel crush the holy priest or you know gore you know uh let's see here sorry the gore fest putrid stench of holland remains which I believe is the full version of the uh, Live Misery. It's just a live in Holland. And then say this Morbid Angel is a show from New Jersey, which was the infamous show where they played uh, Funeral. This be your funerals. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, this this type of stuff has its own kind of like scene. So I, like, I don't know where it fits in like the record label scene. But to me, I'm like this guy right here. Love those bootleg records. I could have pulled out more of those. So, again, though, you know, these were some of my scoop-ups. You know what I mean? Lord Goat. It's a hip-hop record, but 
I like hip hop too, so I'm not just a death metal. Electric Wizard. Just good stuff, man. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not gonna just put myself in one box as far as music. And that's why even during this, I'll talk about a few non-death metal things, but it's mostly all death metal, man. So let's see what we got. Uh sorry, you know, like every episode we do here, I'm completely fucking winging it. So if you guys um if you guys also, uh, Necroharmonic, so basically we just played Putrefact, eventually we are going to put that stuff out, So you sh and uh, that was members of Ceremonium and Incantation back then, but we have a band camp too, if you want to check out any tunes or whatever, so um, you know, uh, we put out a lot of classic demos, I give a lot of stuff away on here, because in the spirit of death metal and record labels... I feel like not everything should be, um, you know, DOG Productions, Jim Stanek. That's what's up, man. Bootlegs. Exactly. Thoughts on Sanguasugabog? Yeah, sure. I love them, man. So, you know, the, uh, those are Rika Death uh, boots are super cool. Headache Records. Yeah. this We're going to try to keep it in the last couple years, but definitely. <laughs> so if you guys want to support, definitely Necroharmonic, too. Um, shamelessly, I will plug my own record label. We sell mostly shirts, and then uh, that's my main bag, man. Selling shirts, making shirts, you know, giving you know, giving back to people's body forever. You know, your record sits on a shelf, but your shirt gets worn out in public, you know. So tonight, you know, I, I sanguisugabog rules, man. That's what's up. Horns up, Jim. Hang around and learn some stuff. DOG Productions needs a better website, and you would be part of this, dude. So tonight, um, let's see here. So we did that label. That one's done. I thought this was always a cool label. The dude from uh, Dead Congregation runs it, and I remember when he started it and everything. Nuclear Winter Records. Um, totally cool label, man. They always put out really good stuff. So some of the new stuff you see is like Endless Loss and Pestle Length. And then um, Excarnated Entity. I have that, man. That's a good album, dude, you know. Witch Vomit, I think I see there. Uh, Morbid Stench. I can't really read the first band, but Cadavercraft. It's This has been a little bit more difficult episode because I have to read the band, <laughs> the band names. <laughs> Nuclear Winter. Uh, Evan Williams, Putrefaction Bootleg on Rika Death is sick. Necroharmonic Flags are always sick. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ne I have some old Necroharmonic releases, and they have value. That's what's saying, man. I uh, have to check out the Dead Congregation. It's fucking sick. Witch Vomit is so fucking cool. Definitely, dude. The, I mean, so... They have, they have re released stuff with other record labels, too. Witch Vomit. So we'll talk about those tonight, too. A little bit of everything here between underground la labels. I'm just going to try to cover as many things as I can, dude. Because there is a lot of fucking record labels. You would be so surprised. So we had an interview last week, which I think we could talk about now. Noxious Ruin label. They put out a magazine, and they put out uh, cassette tapes. And they put out a lot of like handmade, really cool fucking stuff, dude. Like, this stuff is ridiculously cool. And the prices are good. Anatomia, new split CD there. And that Baron Vomit spell, spell split cassette. Those are put in, like, like these iron boxes that are, like, hand-etched and stuff. And then the releases themselves, I mean, the bands pretty much speak for themselves. Anatomia and the Baron and the Vomit spell. The Vomit spell was amazing. Also, that Finnish comp, the sold-out one, that was amazing, too. That's on Bandcamp. And if you listen to Anatomia's version of Brain Spoon by Funebrae, a cover, it's fucking sick. And I hate covers, too. And also, the Undergang cover is very fucking sick on there. I went on there and downloaded just those two songs. I, I was listening to the Fenolith one as well. Fenolith. Dead Congregation and Nuclear Winter Records are major kick ass. That's what I'm saying, dude. I mean, this is like, this is the show that's just going to be talking about whatever kicks fucking ass. Black Death ass in the underground. As much as I could handle, like, as much as I could put on here. Because you know how these shows already go kind of long. 
The Necroharmonic comps of Wombath, Gormant, Eternal Darkness, Dizma, Interment are all jewels of my collection. Thank you, man. I appreciate that, dude. That means a lot. And all everything you mentioned there is out of press besides Dizma's record. Um, uh, thinking of getting a second job so I can keep up with these releases. <laughs> Necroharmonic Eternal. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. I mean, this is, you know, I've made my lifestyle this. So that's the difference of, you know, someone that, you know, I worked for Universal Studios, uh, a, a legitimate company with big money and then um you know that also i was asked to work for the library of congress at some point when i worked for universal studios but i chose necroharmonic over that stuff because to me trying to bring my hobby and my passion to life is everything man you know unfortunately i do have to move with the economics of the the world which sucks assholes but you know like i have to do you know sometimes you have to brave the storm a little bit so buy some shit. Um, even though I'm showing all these other record labels, obviously I have no bias towards like people supporting other record labels. I don't see anyone actually out there trying to do this for me, actually. But I have no bias towards that because I want to support death metal in the long game. And I think I think us, you know, say with these record labels, I'll trade with some of these record labels or talk to them or buy some of their stuff, you know. And um, it's not always two sided. But, but sometimes it is because there's people that have been in the scene so long that they bought stuff off you. They bought stuff off you like fucking 15 years ago as a fan. And then years later, they became a record label person or owner. So I've seen that a million times, which is fucking cool as fuck too. And then there's so many different good record labels like your Nuclear Winter, you know. So check out their website and all that stuff. Also check out Dead Congregation. So, um, let's see. Let's go down some other rabbit holes here. This would be a, ra a rabbit hole and a half. This is like a... This place primarily puts out, like, tapes. But they put... I think they put out vinyl, too. If I'm not... I, they put out vinyl, too. I'm sorry. They don't have their vinyl on their band camp. So, you gotta go to their website for it. It's it's all, like, horror-based soundtrack stuff. But their band camp's phenomenal. And also, their, rele their website's even more phenomenal. And their records are phenomenal. They're called Terror Vision Records. They basically put out like old like soundtrack like fucking record things of like Chud and like 2000 Maniacs, Dead Time Story, Splatter University. Their website looks about two years old compared to what they've been putting out lately. Because they put out the Bloodsucking Freaks double LP. They put out all kinds of crazy stuff. That Gate thing on LP. They put out almost all this on LP. They put out Unsolved Mysteries Q's LP, and I bought that shit. Yeah, Chud 2. Exactly. So, I mean, these are these are some different... These aren't death metal record labels, but the people under the stairs soundtrack. If you get down with some of this stuff, you know? Spooky's OST on Terrorvision. Now, if you check the real Terrorvision um, like website, it's way, way deeper than this uh, band camp right here. So, like, that video violence is amazing. I have that on cassette. I have that Splatter University on cassette. Um, so, I mean, this is a, you know, like, I like I like uh, horror soundtracks, too. And there's been some good ones. Obviously, your Fabio Frizzy returns and stuff. So, I mean, it, you know, this was just an add to the death metal pile here. Because I thought there's some people here that probably do like some horror soundtrack stuff. You know, so I like it. So I, I figure there's other people that like it too. Here's a very important Euro label. One of the most important, I think, in X amount of years, actually. Extremely Rotten Productions. Or Extremely Rotten Records. Now, not, not only did they set off an entire fucking scene in Denmark with, like, their fucking festivals from fucking six, seven, eight years ago that they are not involved with now. They have a store over in... Um, you know Copenhagen and they put out phenomenal and brutal releases and uh they stay close to home and then they also do some demo type releases so they you have a mixture of like really good you know old, and it's always a really fucking just like a really heavy band dude and so I mean some of the bands you see here uh Chaotician Chaotic Deity 
uh, Afterbirth was an old band they put on vinyl. Uh, Broder from Denmark, who are a newer band. Uh, Contagion, which would they put out like a triple LP of. Label uh, Any label that puts out Contagion tapes, 1010. There you go. And also, amongst some of their other releases too, they put out like Head Rot and they put out... Um, Fenrith, Fenrith. Uh, they put out Cadaveric Incubator. They put out Entity on record, dude. So I mean, you know, they put out amazing stuff. They uh, this as far as like this old, um, yeah, man, loads of great bands on Extremely Rotten. There's so many bands that it's like this this website and this screenshot from Bandcamp cannot even encapsulate really what they had put out. Which uh, I have some of their new releases. I didn't bust them out, but like the Spectral Voice split, and then the um, split with Undergang, and then uh, they put out they put out the sickening, gurgling, uh, miasmic necrosis, apex profane. Exactly. So I mean, these are these are really sick, straight up best death metal labels there is, in my in my humble opinion. You know, I'm not, you know, probably won't say that about too many labels on here, but I will say that about them. They basically, you know, they keep me captivated. So that's important. Like, that's the most important part about record labels in general, about being captivated by them. So, you know, if you're not captivated by them, then... So basically, we're going to go to a different chamber right now, like the Wu-Tang. <laughs> um... This would be a brutal death metal label. They made their name a long time ago, and they never stopped, basically. I think they're a legit label. I, I totally... I mean, I don't think... You know, I don't really listen to them too much, but I, I felt like they should be included in this list. And some of the earlier releases I had listened to a little more. Unique Leader Records. So the, I see they did put out Party Cannon, who I know are a cool band. So I thought that was cool. They put out, I know, Waken the Cadaver, which is a band we worked with in two, in the early 90s, or we put out their first album. I think they put out, like, their fifth album or something. And then a Extortionist. Uh, this is, like, a more, like, a brutal death metal, you know, where you, it's more like a dying fetus and kind of, like, suffocation and, you know, uh, you know pyrexia... But but at the same time, I don't want to pigeonhole them to say they are that. Basically, they put out unique stuff. They're they're not the <laughs> uh, they're you know they're not the leader to me. And but they do put out unique stuff. You know, I think they're a solid death metal label. I think they've been a solid death metal label for like a zillion years, and that's that's cool. I mean, I think that's really important in a way. Um, the last couple of years still stayed busy, put out a lot of releases, you know, they put out good stuff. I mean, some people get down with that, you know, a slam stuff. And I always thought, you know, they basically, you know, basically, um, showing the world how it's done. Cool, man. I mean, I, I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to be me, man. I don't even know what I'm doing here. I'm just doing a talking online. <laughs> and then I, I brought some pictures to the party, so... So we'll put the new, new, uh, so one time more unique leader. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure you guys know about some of this shit, dude. You live, you didn't. Severed Savior? There you go. So I partied with the guy from Severed Savior at like the first or second Maryland Death Fest. So that tells you those guys go back a long time, dude. You know, like we hung out and partied. Mid 2000s unique leader, uh, roster rules. Gorgasm. Deeds of flesh, disgorge, vomit remnants. That's what I, that, that's I think the the that would be like where I was at with them too. So those are the like those are the ones like especially vomit remnants. They're one of my favorites of that group right there. Disgorge. Not too much the other ones. Rika death is the best. Yeah, we had some Rika death already. You probably missed it though. Sorry. Uh, right, Severed Savior, I think Mortal Decay, too. I do, do believe they did put out a uh, Mortal Decay record. So, moving on to the next party. They put out Party Cannon, bro. So, let's put this up here. And then, um, you know, if you guys... Uh, you know, like, I'm sure you'll remember some of what you see here. Because, obviously, 
this is a show about record labels and if you're interested as a collector you're probably going to be like what is that my man has been on here quite a few times big respect for him from oakland um uh he puts out uh tons of releases he started to, uh, you know, make his label a little more diverse than just death metal and grind and doom. Transylvanian tapes. He's primarily like a band camp uh, type uh, record label. So uh, basically they put out uh, some of their new releases, as you can see here, are Molten, uh, Leaving, Crush the Specter, um, Shadows Be uh, Dwell. Um, let me see, Bug Bath. I think that Bug Bath is more in like a like a emo kind of. I don't, I don't want to call it emo because I don't know what to really label it. But uh, Parasadi. No, uh, Secretarian Blood. Uh, Secretarian Bloom. I'm sorry if I said blood. So this is a cool label because they have a lot of good uh good priced like cassette tapes and stuff. Yeah, they had put out that awesome Sivirus release. Um, there was there was a lot of stuff I, I put out on here that was like kind of like, um, let's say, uh, you know, before it was known, you know, like Mortuous, you know what I mean? But I believe they share their roommates, the label uh, owner of Mortuous and some members of Mortuous. So, I mean, it, everything, like, um, as he had said on here, like, a lot of the bands were interconnected in a, in a friend circle. So, you know, the label kind of grew from that friend circle. Which, I mean, I think, you know, they put out, a, if that's the friend circle, that's a hot one. Because they put out really good stuff. And they're consistent, you know, like, you have to definitely now probably, you know, check the sound samples to make sure that's the genre you want. That's the only thing I would say nowadays with them, where back in the day you could probably buy almost anything and know, like, all right, this is like kind of a death metal -y release. But even then, like, they put out some doom and some kind of dirgy stuff. So if you don't like that, you might, you know, you might. They offer, like, kind of like specials and clubs and all kinds of good uh, download y type stuff. So, I mean, I, I think that, and they, they, kept it sep they kept it septically fucking DIY on everything. So that was important to me to see. Transylvania Tapes, like, they kept it septically DIY. So in, in a way, like, that's kind of the coolest part about them. They, you know, they completely, like, don't want to play the fucking system shit, you know? And they do a lot of their own thing. So that's what's cool about James, and that's what's cool about Transylvania Tapes. They don't fuck around, like... They kept it 100% about the music, and then that's a good thing to me. So we're going to go on to some talk about some other bands, um, other record labels. Not so many good Aussie distros. That's unfortunate. S try um, Seance Records, maybe. They're an Aussie distro that has pretty good stuff. We've sold them some stuff over the years. Momento More Records. They're a record label from Spain. They have been putting out banging ass CDs for years, dude. Raul, cool dude, man. Always 100%. Um, they don't have a very traditional website or a band camp. They keep it completely DIY, undergroundy. They keep it completely to CDs, no vinyl. So there's no downloads, no vinyls, no tapes. It's just all fucking CDs, dude. No bullshit. And then basically, you know, they are kind of like, they remind me of kind of like a more death metal version of like a Razorback maybe. But I don't know, Razorback was pretty fucking death metal. So, but they kind of come along that same line as an early Razorback type label. They're based out of Spain. Uh, Raul's super cool. Um, basically, he, uh, his CD releases are very fucking cool. Definitely some cool stuff to check out. I mean, I think they're a good label to um, at least take a look at and see, like, oh, shit, like, they got really good stuff, you know? So what's up next on the record label party here? I'm going to see um, and talk about some other uh, a well-known label now, 20 Buck Spin. So basically, uh, 20 Buck Spin made a lot of uh, bigger moves in the last 
two to four years, you know, through, you know, obviously good business practices, they basically have put out a lot of very, um, you know, what, you know, kind of became known death metal-y type stuff, you know, uh, between the worm releases, and then uh, you have Holder, now, and now in the more recent releases, they have a new Sivirus called Maze Envy, and then you have a new Witch Vomit release called uh, Funeral Sanctium, a new Slime Lord release, Maul, Vastum, Tomb Mold on vinyl, a split with Worm, and then uh, so many other releases too. Like they put out like Fetid, and they put out like uh, Cerebral Rot, and they put out um, a lot, just a lot, like a lot more that's even like not really represented here. I see a band called Dissimulator on here. And then their newest one, it's hard to see, Atar Ataris Bliss. So sometimes with this label too, they can have like kind of like different um, tomb, yeah, tomb Mold and Torture Rack. They can have kind of some different stuff too, where it's kind of like, you know, not 100% death metal. But as you see, like 90% of it was death metal. But then, you know, there's stuff that's kind of like, you know, uh, like the sideband of a, the dudes of innumerable forms. Like, it's death metal related, but maybe it's not like 100% death metal. So, um, I think the band's name is like Dreams of Ending or something like that. You guys would know better than me. Slime Lord uh, sounds worth owning. Cool. Does anyone know about Hunkra Records? Good stuff. Badass. Torture Rack. Cerebral Rot. Uh, fetid and tomb mold, definitely, definitely, dude. So there's, I mean, there's a good, I mean, they have good stuff. I see people slagging them a lot, which I think is weird, but it doesn't surprise me. If someone's doing well, usually um, other people want to shit on them, basically. They, they do put out some very ice cream looking vinyl. Um, I mean, that's the only thing for me that I don't think is needed, basically. Like, but that's, that's me. Like, I, other people collect stuff like that. I mean, they're not, you know, it's not bad to see, uh, like, total different colored vinyls. Because if that's what collectors want, then that's what collectors get. You know, you might, I sometimes I do want the goddamn ice cream colored one because it co fits the color of the freaking cover. But other times, you know, I'm not Mr. Black LP collector either. So I, I just don't give a fuck, you know, like I, I buy what's available, <laughs> you know, probably the cheapest. I mean, I, that's, that's how I kind of do it. If I'm buying the vinyl, because I buy tapes a lot now because they're cheaper. And then I buy some vinyl. If I think it's going to be like a long lasting banger, you know, if it's a long lasting banger, I usually try to get a vinyl and the tape and the CD. I go for everything. I go for the cheapest version on Discogs. I feel you, man. The same with me. Yo, Roy, what's up? What's up, Tony? How's it going, man? Appreciate you. The, um, let's see here. Let's go on to the next uh, record label we're going to talk about. Iron Corpse uh, Records. This is a record from Helsinki, Finland. They put out that Galvanizer Morbific tape. And then they put out the Satanic Evil, uh, the old that old band I showed you guys a letter of yesterday. And then they put out a lot of really kind of cool stuff. I see a Funebrae release in there, a Morbific. I think they put out a, quite a few Morbific releases. Um, the newest release, I can't quite see that because my. Uh, and then they put out that Sonic Poison tape also. I don't know if they're just a tape and CD release uh, label. But they definitely have very good uh, stuff on there as far as, um, you know, de good death metal. So they're called Iron Corpse uh, Records. They're on Bandcamp and they're a Finnish label. And um, I saw during the course of this, I looked up this other Finnish label that I felt like was like kind of like a mover and shaker. The other records. And it said they were rest in peace, actually, 2013, which I did not know. Uh, 2023 so the other records though had some good stuff so if you want to check out the releases that are out there you guys should definitely check those out because they put out a couple of cool releases and uh some finish and uh just good stuff just check it out so let's see what else 
this this was i thought a good label that put out like uh they put out their own band they put out a lot of horrific shit <laughs> they put out like, reissues of stuff they put out awesome uh graphics on a lot of stuff um they uh this is this it i'm sorry sorry i'm not high enough for this this is it dismal fate records um Tenebro is the guy's main band but then on top of that he's put out like grave robbers grave ghoul mortuary ghoul body bag he put out like a whole series of like necrophagia cassette tape releases and shirts i see he put out cryptic dissolution from uh russia on there primal horde scorching tomb now you have to remember these releases were all done like z demo 22 from brilliant uh behemoth i think that says behemoth but you know D dismal fate records you can check them on Bandcamp. they have a lot of sick releases like body bag and all those tenebra ones are super mortician out good covers you know groza i see there body bag exhumed tenebra they had a lot of good releases. Uh, the, what do you call it? The Necrophagia releases were cool. New Tenebro, super sick. Came late. Yeah, I talked about both of those already. Um, Dismal Fate rules, dude. It does. Uh, thanks for Iron Corpse. I'll check them out. Well, that's a right. And Leslie wanted to mention Tank Crimes to check them out. Because I don't have a thing for them either. My man Tim from Parasitic Records. He plays in Weregoat. He plays in Mournful Congregation. He's played in Splatterhouse. Uh, we Necroharmonic actually collaborated with him on a couple cassette tapes, even. Uh, Phlegm, Disciples of Mockery, and Crematory. So being that I knew him in the flesh, I felt that, you know, he was a solid guy. And uh, he runs a very, it's like a, my, more in like a distro zone. But he also puts out some releases. He said he was retiring, but his 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 uh website continues to churn up releases and as you see he's selling some naked whipper morlock acid orgy lps and then departure chandelier lps and his prices are really good too man that to be noted there he's in the band wear goat and they're sick too he sells a lot of the wear goat stuff that guy has played drums for every band <laughs> So a 20 buck spin is what Relapse was in the early 90s. Nuclear Winter, yep, we talked about them. So let's see what else. Life After Death Records. This was a, uh, uh, like, kind of like a, whoops, hold on a second. I'm trying to remove that other part. Life After Death Records. They have new releases out, too, with um, Negative Prayer, I think. And then, um dissected what was put out like today maybe and they uh they put out a release with vomit spell also uh phantasmagore uh they put out a lot of really tight stuff man their their prices are good you get downloads with the stuff uh they got funeral vomit releases they put out cds they put out a lot of good stuff man they had really tight label cool dude um you know what i mean he keeps it pretty fucking underground kind of like transylvanian tapes you know and then he has a distro behind him too you should support that because you probably get some pretty good prices man he collected up and traded so much stuff but kept it on a straight up real deal underground level where you know it's like kind of like you know what i mean so definitely support life after death productions they're fucking tight they, they put out some releases that i thought were super tight and um the prices look solid that's what i'm saying and the prices are solid so they have they put out like coffins and like anatomia eric has done well i agree man i like eric and i think that uh i think that they are a sick label that stayed consistent you know it um the last couple years uh they seem like they put out really quality good death metal they have good tastes uh in my in my opinion 
which so they're definitely supportable to this record label show and i hope every i hope people try do check them out you know like the this is how this is the life's blood of how the underground works so the you know the more the more we support each other in a weird way if one record label gets some support it sometimes it trickles down to other ones especially if they're running distros so um rotted life records this has been a pretty mover and shaker label too man in my opinion they you know they see they put out a uh, disguised malignancy from finland recently corporalith uh gasudar releases um cryptic blood uh malformed rot heads and then beyond this they put out like all this other cool stuff like uh a uh, uh malignant altar and like just a lot of really good super good releases some of their vinyl has really been really good Vrenth they put out um you know if anybody wants to speak to any of these labels and it's something you don't see because some of these things are very long they're very um you bookmarked life after death cool man awesome that's what this that's what the show is about <laughs> yeah i want people to um fucking you know support the fucking scene dude man a gashudar and disguised malignancy i the gashudar uh uh what do you call it the gashudar malignant altar record is really tight dude i got that on vinyl too man man there's so many hidden labels there's so many labels of nowadays there really is yeah, I want to talk about. I want to talk to these labels, Coffin Rot and Fafobolic, uh on Rotted Life too. Yeah, that was the first time I had heard of uh, Fofobolic. Uh Night Hag. Exactly, I got their cassette. Samuel Fox. We're brothers and cousins. Uh, uh, the Gashudar Malignant Split. Definitely, that's the one I spoke on. Uh, you go and uh, check Dark Druid. Have some live shit of a new show. The, um, the, as far as like, you know, rotted life, they put out a lot of really good stuff, man. So it's definitely worth a look-see. If you're not familiar with them, definitely take a look-see because they, you know, they, they kind of, they're almost they're I mean, they're almost by it because it's so good status. Next up, Desert Wasteland Productions. We had Sean on here a few weeks ago for a friendly convo. So we talked about a lot of his releases, but his band camp and his website, you know, he he's pretty selective with his releases, but he's put out some amazing stuff from fluids. Like all the early fluid stuff was because of this guy. Uh, Tenebro, Tribal Gaze, uh, Vile Apparition, his new band, uh, Innards Decay, Miasmic Ooze, um eaten alive ananya flesh rot he's put out like a few flesh rot he's put out vinyl that's worth supporting and then you know he got stuck in that fucking vinyl vortex too which kind of sucks so then all of a sudden you're stuck with like all these records of something that's like years old sean rules dude fucking a dude desert Produ wasteland productions is great also anything you want to hear on here you just need to go listen to the friggin band camp and this is pretty much what it looks like we're just not playing it because there's so many goddamn labels that i want to support on here that it's hard to play like every single fucking thing you know and i mean you know me doing this ep episode without music is kind of important too because i feel like Let's just focus on the talk, you know, the talk a little bit and then talk, you know, focus on, you know, this re focus on what's what's really at hand here, which is the record labels, you know, the product they put out. It has a lot of love put into it, man. And it's like it's a good it's a good way. It's a good it, it's an artistic expression, basically, that gets spewed out to all the rest of us, which is cool, you know. Here's a friend of mine. Let's let's uh let me take get this off screen for a second. So I hope you guys are liking it. Fuck the vinyl vortex, exactly, dude. Yeah, I mean, it, some people they get stuck in that, you know, and which sucks, dude. Like it just there was a time when things were just unhappy for making vinyl in general, you know. So let's take you off screen. Fucking fuck a vinyl vortex. 
Seems like CDs are coming back for the moment. Tapes are not wanted now from labels. I don't know about that, man. Antifarious on DWP too? Definitely. So, you know, I hope that so far in this hour and a half into this, you guys are getting into this and enjoying, you know, the show. I want, you know, we, you know, we'll talk about, uh, we'll try to talk about anything I didn't talk about at the end. But basically, like, I brought, I did bring a lot to the table here because I think I touched a bunch of stuff already. So I'm going to try to um, touch as much as I can, man. It goes back and forth like that. It does. So let's see here. Label it's always making moves. Like I said, um, I'm going to just repeat myself because it's, we're at the hour and a half mark. Like, I don't have, like, everything on here, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm looking at an outsider's provider, like, like outside buyers, uh, you know, because, like, I don't support every single fucking label on here, dude. Like, it's not that I don't support them. I think they're part of the death metal ecosphere, but I might not do business with them, or I might not, you know, I might not like all their releases, or I might find some of their stuff a little questionable, so, like, I just want to throw that out there, but I still showed Nuclear War Now on here, as you saw, which I don't really agree with everything with them. And then there's other stuff, too. So I want to not keep this in the negative. I want to keep this in the positives. So if I mention a record label on here that I don't, you guys know I don't like, it's because it's it's completely, this has to be non-biased in a way, you know, because I feel like these are labels that put out some of my friends' bands. So how could I not be, not mention them as some kind of piece of the underground, dude? Hell's Headbangers Records, Caustic Phlegm release. Uh, they put out my boys' uh, release, Cemetery Urn here. Demon Sea, Cyanide, Scott. Shout out to Scott. Um, Nun Slaughter, uh, Abigail, Necrofilth, Necrophagia. Uh, putrefying flesh I see over there so I guess that was put out as a 7 inch and then a diabolic blasphemia uh, release in December also so they run a pretty big distro um, they have uh, what do you call it the uh, just complete good you know they put out a lot of good death metal so like and then they also have a pretty decent distro I love tapes but it seems like labels are selling more CDs than tapes right now. That's it. Yeah, it, it, it could be, man. You know, there's a little of everything going on. So basically, you know, there's a little of everything going on in the collector's market. You know, they're the biggest. I don't know if they're the biggest. Um, I think that the metal underground might go on forever because so many people are amazing. Exactly, dude. So the. Uh, you know like i want you know this as far as like this this be an unbiased look too at what everything you know as far as you know like because i mean i'm showing band i'm showing a few record labels here i really don't listen to much but i know they put out good releases in the last couple of years and then you know like say like unique leader like i haven't heard them for like i don't know 15 years but I had, you know, I know they put out good releases, so I mean, why am I gonna not talk about them? You know, it needs to be. Uh... Here's another label that, like, I, I mean, they put it, some of the incantation releases they put out are cool. They're always, I mean, they were. I know the original founders of this label, so to me, this has become something. Like, I almost worked for this record. I don't want to say worked, but they asked me to be an investor in this record label, Relapse Records. So they put out a lot of like they put out that new coffins release, uh, Sinister Oath, and then I see a release with Zombie, which is like kind of like a horror soundtrack type band. They've put out numerous uh, sick fucking uh, death releases, and uh, put out like numerous sick incantation releases, mortician releases. They're completely like um, they're completely like a really longevity label you know like a nuclear you know they started with and teamed up with nuclear blast very early in the game hold on one second <clears throat> and then they had original kind of like owners or whatever which was uh bill from exit 13 and uh matt uh jacobson 
so yeah, uh, myself and um, some of these guys, we would hang out, dude. Like they would go to shows, they would go to Philly shows at G Willikers and stuff, and um, I would hang out with those. I, I remember them driving me to like festivals, even like not, I think it was like Milwaukee Death. Fe- I forget. Like we drove like around and we would hang around and so you know like there was things you know we would bounce music off each other i didn't want to be a record label at the time and i would sometimes play them something like amorphous or something you know but uh, like uh, years ago um it was like more like a small operation it was like run out of a trunk and and then it was kind of getting bigger and bigger out of uh bill's house so they had started like a warehouse and a record store and everything which lives on in infamy basically it's relapse records you know they're a a huge mail order certainly relapse of today isn't the same of the glory days but they have one of the best catalogs there is i can agree with that dude people could say what they want but they're responsible for a lot of crushing crucial for bringing death metal outside to the masses agreed agreed a thousand percent man and they are still part of the scene by putting out incantation and mortician records and putting out coffins even they put out that coffins is new man and coffins is important as you know they're a sick japanese band so i hope you guys are liking this uh, episode of death metal podcast that's just dedicated towards record labels you know like i think people throw bias i hit 2k all right so we hit 2000 subscribers in the middle of the show welcome hey, in dude pretty sick bro that's good man thank you for letting me know bro um I, you know it I don't need to celebrate, but I appreciate knowing that because, uh, yeah, I was said on today, I was like, man, I'm only like five to 10 subscribers from 2000. So that's kind of cool. So that means I yammered for hours and hours and people actually hit subscribe. Crazy motherfuckers. I wouldn't. I subscribe to uh, some YouTube channels with people yappering. So let's see here. We have. Um, we're gonna put those in the put them in their box. There's a lot to go through here, man. Somebody just mentioned this label, so maybe we could just bring it up now. CDN Records, and I saw Cannibal Cam, who's doing the growl uh, thing, is involved with them. So he's my boy. Uh, I know Craig uh, is from CDN Records is the main uh, guy. Um, they put out, you know, they put out interesting releases. So you have a Thanatos Rebirth 1985 release there. But then you have like newer bands. I'm assuming these are newer bands. Eaten by Sharks. Um, they put out some reissue of Baphomet I see there, which is not new. The Boiled in Blood and the 91 EP release. Then a release with Gaft Die Already. If they, I wonder if that's Gaft from New Jersey, I think. A band who did like a demo release. Um, Secreted looks like one of their new ones there Gut Ripper they put out like a grotesque infection and like a bunch of like really kind of pretty sick ones Gaft is a great band with suffocation influence I think they're from Jersey if I remember correctly Um, so thank you uh, uh, darling Dee Dee I subscribed to Necroharmonic in 91 (laughs) Club Babyhead (laughs) what's up Derek appreciate it man thank you Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Yeah, 2,000 subscribers. That's kind of crazy. So, uh, Caustic Vomits, cool. All right, yeah, and the the flag, thank you. uh, (laughs) So, next up, let's see here. I'm going to play, like, I'm going to do, like, one or two more, and then I'm going to play some music or something, because my voice is starting to go. Let's push this up to the top. CDN Records, though. They're out of Canada. The prices are good, too. I'm still here, right? Do I still got power? Let me know, bros. Let me know in the chat if I'm still a full power here. I see some gl- glitchery. All right, I'm good. Thank you appreciate it you need you, sometimes you just need that dude i saw i saw the thing spin and i was like oh no what what some real people who murdered death metal bands serial killers into extreme music i'm on all right thank you the um i saw it i saw the the wheel of death spin one time i'm like what's that 
So this is the lab- this is the label edition of Death Metal Podcast, which I think we're covering quite a bit here, and then we're talking about a lot of good bands. Death metal ones. There's a couple black death in here too. Let's try this first on for size. It's an old label. They have like probably like three hundred releases. They set off shows like every friggin' week, dude. They've been involved in the underground for like thirty plus years. They were in multiple bands. And the label is still strong to this day. And they bring bands into tour. All kinds of crazy shit. Obliteration Records from Japan. Now this label, I mean, they always put out fucking sick shit. (laughs) They never falter, man. You know, they never fall down, ever. Like, every release they put out over all these years, like, they rarely ever, 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 ever um, put out bad releases, dude. So, like, they're, you know, it's like this this label, if you could see the roster here, they're selling uh, t- tickets that are fest. Uh, the uh, Aris Ascara, Ascaria uh, Death Fest. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing that. And then some of their new releases just on this band camp. So this, does, this doesn't even touch this. I'll tell you that right now. So Obliteration Armageddon label. But basically, this this Bandcamp doesn't even touch the Obliteration uh, catalog. But as you can see here, Squash Bowels, some um, Pestilength, um, uh, Vile, uh, I'm sorry, Vile Gal Blood Hill, Corpse Fucking Art release. I know they had fucked with Caustic Vomit recently. Grav Grav, which is uh, members of um of uh same the dude from the label basically and then uh there's butcher abc that he was in uh he had put out last days of humanity uh the last days of humanity extremely rotten were good Ex- abhorrence collection and head rot were good definitely dude yeah fuck yeah squash bowels castellambra cool obliteration rules man bottom line it goes beyond the screen too, man. Way beyond the screen. They put out release with Dead, Squash Bowels, Dead Infection. Um, just the list is fucking endless, dude. I did a, even a combo with them years ago with Gut. And they have been a solid, solid force in the Japanese underground as far as like setting off shows and festivals and all kinds of stuff like that. So... You know, they've brought so many cool bands to Japan. It's almost unfucking real dude. And then they throw shows, like, every fucking weekend. Because they always have their, like, placard outside. And I've told I've been told they throw the shows during the day. It kind of looks like a coffee house, almost, from a U.S. point of view. But, the, you know, they'll have Anatomia playing. And have, they do distros at their shows. They, have, they had an art museum at one point in uh, Japan. I haven't been to it. But basically, you know, and they sold death metal there, I think. Um, Naru's always been a solid guy. Cool. Uh, Narutashi uh, Sakin is the main dude behind it. So, yeah. Obliteration. Uh, own the Dead. Cock and Ball. Torture. Uh, dead Infection. And Massacre. Yeah, those were all sick releases. I have some Leprophiliac release on, on Obliteration. That's fucking sick. Straight Facts. Sounds sick. Yeah, dude, it is sick, man. It's He puts out... He just... Constant death metal warrior, man. Bottom line, dude. And, you know? It's definitely stepping up for his scene and stepping up for, you know, others a lot. And then, you know, he has a record label, too, and has put out a lot of his friends' bands. And then he's put out international bands that are really fucking sick, dude. So, I mean, there's so many bangers and uh, a lot of grindy, gore, fast, you know? Definitely... You know, maybe even borderline a couple Japanese grindcore bands, then but mix but more death metal than anything I would say there. So um, let me play a song and then we'll talk about some more stuff. So let's see here. I'll make this a shortish one. <laughs> this is a Profanatica side band that was pre Profanatica. Actually, I'm sorry. <laughs>
road and <laughs> so that was pre prophonautica stuff they had a, it was pretty prophonautica like right so th this this episode is dedicated just towards record labels as you guys know if you've been tuned in since the beginning or you're tuning in now Meat Shits and Infester was also on Obliteration Records. Yeah, Obliteration Records catalog in general is banging as shit. So if you guys want to share the show too, please share the link on your Facebook or IG stories or whatever. Here's how to support the channel through Necroharmonic.com if you want to buy some stuffs. Hit like and all that baloney. And then comments afterwards is helpful too. Um, just to just so other people can see the show or whatever. You know, every YouTuber hates saying that shit, right? So this label, this label's been around for quite a few years. They kind of took a hiatus. I know the guy got into like tattooing or something. And then um, they came back with a vengeance and uh, Hound, I believe his name is. Corpse Gristle Records from Texas. These guys put out, like, they're starting to put out, like, newer bands mixed in with some of their old catalog. So they had put out, like, the Devourment and a bunch of, like, you know, like, slam down, beat down Texas shit. But, you know, nowadays, too, they'll put out a Reputilation mixed in with, like, Piss Rot, Left to Rot, a reissue of Dead in There, uh, Brutal Advice. They put out some tapes with Frozen Soul. They put out a release there with uh, Broken Hope. A couple of releases, I see. They put out... They were, like, amongst the early kind of, like, you know, slam kind of labels, if you could call it that. Like, I don't want to pigeonhole them. But basically, like, they, they put out, like, really good stuff, like, years and eons and eons ago. So, Piss Rot uh, is sick. Good guys. Cool, man. So, the, you know, Cor uh, Corpse Gristle Records, they were formed in the mid-90s, as it says. And they put out some cesspool stuff, man, you know? You hit the like button. Thank you. And whoever were the subscribers, thank you. I, I uh, definitely, Obliteration had done a gothic lease. Obliteration site is so fucking good. Exactly, dude. The, the site, even, it's in Japanese, and you go Japanese to U.S. translation. And it's like, holy shit, their fucking lineup is fucking phenomenal, dude. And their distro is phenomenal. So, I mean, they, you know, they had, they definitely had it going on, dude. Let's see, this is that. So, um, you know, this was, again, Corpse Gristle Records. Definitely worth checking out. I noticed they've been busy on a vinyl streak right now. Putting out, like, different, like, multicolored vinyl stuff. Um, a lot of devourment, yeah, disgorge and devourment on Corpse Gristle. So they'll put out, like, you know, different old devourment records. They were the first ones putting them out, though, years ago, too. So they, they you know, they were pretty busy with that. So let's go down a darker alley, not so brutal death metal. Um, let's see here. This, this is a label I found as an interesting one, and I did buy off them, and so I know it's legit. Death Shall Rise Records. So they, they do, like, cassette reissues of old, like, old, like, really classic-ass demos. And then they'll do, like, uh, vinyl issues of, like, demos and, like, black metal demos and, like, some death metal stuff. So they'll put out like a limited edition like dismember like record or like like as you could see there some grave thing uh with sick disgust eternal demo on a 12 inch vinyl and I've, they put out like mayhem dark throne um varg's band a bunch of like you know reissuey tape things and they they've you know on some of them they kept it true to form like say say like the i got the mayhem from them and um, it had like a yellow cover, kind of like the way the the stained, you know, stained looking old Mayhem demo cover would look like. I mean, so it was kind of cool, man. It was like the releases, you know, beyond what you're seeing here too. You'd have to check the website. They sell out kind of fast, and they put out good release. They'll put out like Emperor and like, 
I don't know, like really like Isengard and a bunch of like good Norwegian early demo band type things. So they're definitely worthy of a checkout. Um, there was one other um, off market label I wanted to show too, but I just did not get to grab it. So I couldn't think of their name offhand. But um, this is a good, you know, this was a good label. I, I thought they put out interesting releases at least and this is about releases and not about and labels and not about opinions and whatever this is just music listeners buying music so the whole show is about that it's not about bootleg and this and that like i just this is about fan music and labels and again sometimes you know i don't agree with everything i see on here and sometimes I don't even listen to every single label on here, just to be brutally honest. But I do think that I see them making moves in the underground, and I think that that's cool. And I see that they were making moves in the underground the last couple of years, too. Some of them I've known, actually, or know of them as, like I said, fans, or as uh, distros, zine makers, or even an early form of the record label that they did back in the 90s or, or 2000s quit and then came back 20 fucking years later so there's like every little facet of this thing especially when you know <laughs> you've been around it so long that you have basically followed the entire scene you know and i follow i followed it pretty well i want to give um so this this is unrelated to what i had just said anything negative there is no negatives about this show. This is a show just for learning purposes, and I hope that somebody's pulling something out of this. Because I don't, you know, like, I don't want any of the commentary that I say before one thing to mean another. It doesn't. I'm just making the commentary just to make it clear. You know what I mean? I, I have to talk about, out loud about, like, how, how I feel and just be honest with myself on the stream, too, to say, like, I don't support this or... It's just part of death metal, you know? And then, you know, and it's there's a part of me that, like, like doesn't give a fuck to even say some of that stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of funny, but, like, in today's age, I have to fucking talk some fucking bullshit. Anyway, I'm going to talk about some good record labels and continue here. Sorry, guys. This is a cool one, man, in my opinion. They put out a lot of good stuff. They put out a good Gordon Beyond Necropsy pretty recently. Um, Haunted Hotel Records and um, Sick Label from Yonkers, New York. Ralphie, good good guy. It's been on the live too. Uh, Haunted Hotel Records uh, puts out um, sick stuff, man. Sulfuric, Curity, a Gruesome Stuff Relish, Oful Split there. You got Mass Grave. He does a lot of focus on like grindcore. He's a he has the biggest Agathocles collection there is, or Agathocles. He said he has every 7-inch in every, every record. That's a lot, dude. They have 367 inches, splits or something. He put out Mike from Abominator's Band, Gasp, Last Sore, uh, Sore for Days on vinyl, Catheter, Rot, Split LP, Rupture, Bird Flesh, a couple Bird Flesh releases. He put out Last Days of Humanity. He put out a, he put out he's been putting out hip hop a little recently because um just to uh you know flip the scripts a little bit because he likes it so so uh yes yeah, cerebral catheter rot I mean catheter rot um so the uh bird flesh rules so he puts out you know he's been putting out vinyl and some CDs uh some tapes I think he think he put out Francisco's band too uh Hypo Christians. He might have put out multiple releases from him. Uh, he has a good record collection. Cool dude. Um, he's been on the live before. If you guys ever want to check it out. It is uh, Ralphie from Haunted Hotel. Yonkers. He lives right down the street from Will Romer. So. But that's how I, I feel like I met him through Will. I don't I don't know. Because I'm in the... I was in... or I'm in, I'm in it, I guess to say. The New York scene, you know? So, like, you get to know other New Yorkers, you know? I sound like a New Yorker, I'm sure. Some slam is quality. Escaphagia, epidicondary, digestive flesh, and cranium. I agree with that statement completely, man. Especially with digestive flesh, cranium, and epidemony. I don't know the first one, though, so now I'm going to have to check that out. 
Aligi, Luigi, exactly. You know your shit. That's cool, man. But what the fuck is Slam? Some people like it, some don't. It's really, you, you know, some people like different stuff. And then now we're going to go into a chamber that's not Slam. And I've, I put this on here because I wasn't really too familiar with the label. You know, I'm familiar lightly with a few of the bands, but I heard their name popping off here and there. I saw it on the best of the year uh, list when we did a show about best record label of the year instead of fucking best band or whatever fake list they put out there. Sentinent Ruin Records. So Sentinent Ruin Laboratories from Oakland, California. So this is a label that uh, has, they seem like they looks primarily Black Death uh, Metal. I can't completely speak on this, but uh, Apparition, Hell, Diabolic Oath, Black Fucking Cancer, Raw War, Diabolic Oath Split with Apparition. Um, this, I think the list of this band goes on a little further than what we're showing here too. So, Sentinent Ruin. You know, they do, you know, what, you know, not a slam death metal thing. It looks more to me like a black death metal thing. And I'm sure there's probably some fans of that here. Because there's definitely people that have mentioned this name of this label and passing to me. And say, hey, did you check out Sentinent Ruin Records? So, if that's just them trying to tell me, like, there's something on there that you want to hear, Roy. So, I mean, in a weird way, like, I, you know, I take recommendations. I'll go and look at their band camp. I'll go and, you know, I might look up an album on Spotify. Not too much. I just listen to Party, Party Beer, uh, you know, DRI records on there. So this is our record label show. I just have to throw these fucking stupid banners up occasionally because we're going to be hitting the two-hour mark. I know it's amazing that we could do a show for hours on end. But at the same time, I mean, there's a lot to talk about here as far as the amount of record labels there is. And Sentinent Ruin being one of them, man. <laughs> My voice is soothing. <laughs> cool, bro. Appreciate it. Uh, consider it uh, some Mortician Slam Death. Bird Flesh, uh, Rule, Justin, they're just more grindcore. Tony, imagine grindcore with pig squeals and snares for vocals. That's pretty much slam in my uh, definition. They have a more detailed description of slam online. There's, you know, that that's that's a weird thing about the whole like, you know, kind of. It feels like there's been like a little bit of hate on slam slam death metal for a couple of years now. I'm not really sure why. But I think, you know, I think that there's slam elements in some of the same exact bands that are, you know, on the same exact labels. So it's kind of weird to hear a hatred of, you know, a thing of, you know, you're putting out music that has <laughs> bands that sound the same on your label. So there's the Sentinent Ruin. I don't know if there's any fans out there of Sentinent Ruin records, but I saw people, um, yeah, you should at least check out the music, you know? To tap into the Bandcamp and just see if there's some stuff you like, even if it's the first few records. Dread Records, Death Shall Rise Productions, definitely should have put them on here. I didn't make it on that one. The slam is an entire genre be, built about League of Interversity. <laughs> I don't know about that, you know? Maybe a little bit more about Devourment. So let's put this up here. I think I already did that. And then um, let's go to the next candidate on our party line. This guy's in Mortuous. He does a record label. It's called Carbonized Records. Now his newest release is Funeral Leech. It just came out a few days ago. And then uh, they put out also a release with Morbid Stench. He put out his own release, uh, Mortuous. Uh, this is a drummer, Chad. Uh, Street Tombs, Body Rot. Uh, I think he plays or put out that negative prayer. Um, Horonation. Uh, skeletal uh, Outer Tomb uh, release. Now, Carbonized Records, definitely a force to be reckoned with. You know, they've been coming with some hard stuff left and right. Uh, beyond what you see here, Funeral Chant is in there, too. There's a, a couple other, like, Mortuous releases that are really sick. Funeral Leech Rules, definitely, dude. 
there's more than there's more than what you see man again like uh, this is just the overview about record labels so like there's more to what you see under the covers you know uh morbid stench awful stench and pungent stench <laughs> so there's more to, you know there's more to these record labels if you look deeper especially like a transylvania life after death obliteration you know a nuclear war now uh, uh hell's headbangers uh necroharmonic <laughs> you know there's like there's so much stuff dude like you put out x amount of stuff and you know or just just even like some of the smaller labels uh, noxious ruin have a bunch of releases i couldn't even show on there there's just a, you know i just pulled a uh, photo off their like kind of website thing they don't have a band camp or anything and they put out amazing stuff too so here's another record label. This is like a more like a black death oriented record label. They've been around for quite a few years. They kind of, they don't, they don't, they, they never leave you hanging either, especially if you like black death metal. Invictus Records from, uh, I think, UK or Ireland, if I'm not mistaken. So they put out uh, Sepulchre, um, Tulsa Doom, um, Human Humanitarn, Vigil. Uh, malicious they're very sick uh I, i've heard them unpure i guess that's a second unpure i know that band um again under the covers uh there's so many the mega vortex pious levis shout out to uh carl uh bones so invictus productions uh you know they put out a lot of good releases they're very consistent they're very into you know like a certain black death subgenre of some sort you know what i mean where it's kind of like they cover like if you were into like a certain genre of music like they you know this would probably be a go-to spot you know what i mean i think that you know they've put out they put out so many numerous releases that are i don't want to say sound the same but have the same kind of like black death undertone you know, I know they're big fans of like ba uh, lab uh, bands like Destroyer Six Six Six. Maybe they've even released it, but basically, they you know it seems like a lot of their label releases and this and that kind of can roll in that like Destroyer Six 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 zone. You know, I listened to the Leprophiliac cover of Leprophiliac today. <laughs> exactly, dude. Listen to the uh, Brain Spoon cover by um, what do you call it? The Brain Spoon cover by Anatomia. It's really awesome, dude. I mean, the sound they got on is amazing, dude. The sound they got on that one's amazing. So check out Invictus Records. I've traded record. I've traded with them over the years. Cool dudes. You know, I'm not basing this on anything I know or the people or anything, but I just think that um, I think they're worthy as a record label to be mentioned on a black death metal record label show. <laughs> you know. I mean, everything I name on here is not going to be your cup of tea, but I don't care. <laughs> so, spe spectral, uh, s sepulchral voice records. This seems like they've been, like, kind of pulling up, like, you know, they have, like, a very distinctive, also awesome record label lineup. And some of the record uh, releases are very sick, you know? The newest one on here showing as the Viper elect, but I think they have something else out. I don't know if that's Drowned from Sweden, um, Concrete Winds, Saijin, uh, Grave Miasma, another Saijin release, Black Curse, who are amazing. Uh, uh, so this label's pretty sick, man. They got a lot of other good releases that are not showing again. So definitely try to tap in with them and um, check out their music, man. I mean, this is a good, solid Black Death uh, release uh, label reveal i see hordes of damnation so definitely tap in they have two different reveal uh label uh releases uh if you want you know like this i want to tap i'm trying to tap in mostly with death metal and black metal only obviously but you know like i touched on some horror soundtrack shit some grindcore like haunted hotel does a lot of grindcore but they put out death metal too you know but, you know, Grave Miasma is a, is a dark, swirling death. That's what I am saying, dude. So Invictus is quality. Invictus is quality. And the Brain Spoon is so sick, dude. 
So, you know, uh, shout out to Noxious Ruin again, man, for putting out such a cool release. So I guess I'm saying it right. It's sepulchral uh, Records. Sepulchral Voice Records. Spectral. Spectral Voice. I think it's like uh, the Sodom. It's hard to tell because they always threw this yeah! onto their shit, you know? So let's see what else we got here. So um, this would be like more of like a like a death metal kind of like mix between like death metal a couple old releases cool stuff i i thought this was a, a good one sewer rot records uh they put out transgressor as you could see which are obviously an old school death metal band um intestinine bullism uh the old release of um victims of infernal uh, de internal decay uh puke wraith uh, convulsive rot within um phantom crawl cyanosis an old uh, jersey band uh there's uh i think oxygen destroyer if i'm not mistaken there and then uh, intestine bullism they put out some of their own bands too and uh they're a cool label some underground shit and uh definitely some uh brutal like you know some death metal so like more like a death metal oriented one than a black death or whatever they put out a lot of good uh releases so they're called sewer rot records and again a lot of these things can be found on Bandcamp to give like a little thing so if you want to check out the uh rotten blast or the puke wraith you could fuck with that you know or the old mortis skull release also intestine bullism they had that like kind of like dismembery thing going on from japan so it's cool to see that they got a, a couple of releases that are coming out on a u.s label and they deserve it man because they're a sick fucking band here's a cool um a cool one this is a label run by will romer it's um red rum records.net so basically that you know he he you it, by the looks of things this is his head page so you would think okay he just sells mortician stuff because he's a mortician but these are just his best sellers but behind the curtain this guy has a fucking awesome distro dude i mean he has some next level distro shit so you really cannot like this is some next level distro man you know he has a lot of he'll he'll have that rare thing man he'll have that rare fucker or he'll have you know like i bought some cock and ball torture like a demo -y collection man no problem dude this is this is for everybody man so yeah this is for every this show this show and many and the rest of them are, are so much i've spent so much money on red rum and primitive recordings exactly dude and these are good labels to support man it's straight underground I mean, you know, I'm showing all mortician stuff, but you really need to look at the distro in this one. Yeah, I will does distro at New York shows, but like the stuff that, you know, for somebody that lives someone far, farther away, say like Cali, whatever, basically like redrumrecords.net, you should check it out. And then it basically, they have really banging distro, man. Especially when it comes to like gore, grind, and death metal stuff. They always seem to really have banging stuff. And Will is my man, dude. I'm going to go to primitive recordings today. I'll probably go tomorrow if they're open. Oh yeah, definitely, dude. Yeah, they're open on Sundays. They're closed on Mondays, actually. Rage Records. Yes. Svart. Godden. Definitely, dude. Post winter. So, so yeah. Check out redrumrecords.net. They're a good. Uh, so here's one that's just like a distro, and I, I felt like they needed to be added here because I saw their name like multiple times, and um, they always seem like they have really scummy shit, and they're called Scumlord Distro. So they carry like a lot of cassettes and like some CDs, I believe. And they always seem like they have, like, really, like, bugged out, like, distro stuff. And it moves fast, too, man. So, Coffin Mulch, uh, Dipagus, uh, Oxidized Razor. Just different, you know, cool underground stuff. Bunch of logos you can't read and shit. Some Gore Grind. 
Self-Made God is pretty cool. Yeah, they're cool, man. I should have put them on here, actually. I ordered a Grok, uh, Grotch demo uh, tape, Garotted demo tape from Red Rum last year. The demo is like a deicide from Finland. They're members of Ancient Death, actually, if it's Garotted. Uh, just spun the Coffin Mulch the other day. Great stuff. Cool. Yeah, so like, you know, this label, uh, Scumlord or whatever it is. What is it? Scumlord. They got good stuff, man. They, you know, like, they're Scumlords. And it's a distro, but I thought it kind of deserved a little piece of piece of history in here, man. You know? Um, I wanted to represent... It's hard to represent record labels without at representing distros just a little bit. Because they kind of, um... They kind of, you know, go hand in hand. Will and Roger are beasts. That's what's up. Roger, I uh, didn't know it was no effects related. Uh, cool conversation. Yeah, Roger's the man, dude. Talked to Roger last year when I did a J Dog poser. He got invited to Punk Museum. Yeah, I don't think he listens to no effects. Let's talk about Roger's label. Primitive recordings. I mean he doesn't he stays busy on mortician merchandise, but also Roger is in uh, primitive uh, brutality, uh, his one man gore band, bits of gore. Uh, his uh, I don't want I want to call prosthetic cunt a one man band, but it technically has some additional members. He's put out stuff with malignancy. He played drums for malignancy, I think, and guitar. Um, but he's primarily a guitarist and mortician. Uh, he recently put out a band from the Philippines called Dead Flesh Architect. But again, this guy's distro is where it's at, and then he has a store in uh, Las Vegas where he sells toys and then he sells new death metal releases on vinyl he'll get some cassette he'll get some rare stuff he'll you know he's a producer man he's just constantly producing very fucking shit yeah the vomit fuck stick the uh basically with with raj um it's it basically he produces stuff too so like he puts out all these tapes and he you know he's he's a he's a genius too man Roger should play some more drums, definitely, dude. I think Roger's back is fucked up right at the moment, but I, I could still see I, I could still see him in my house playing his own drums. I, I bought off him. He blew your mind in malignancy. He was amazing in malignancy and drums. So to um, let's give you guys a song instead of a dance. We're just gonna just put this on just a little bit, um, and then we'll come back to the uh. Let's see here now. I, I, I'm thinking twice about playing this because, like, I want this to be like a full necroharmonic, uncensored, uh, uncopywritten <laughs> episode. It's hard to do that on YouTube. Um, there's just so many hurdles, you know, blanked out space. This says this, this, this album has a space in it. So here's a, uh, just a, f a filler song while I move around.
Disciples of Mockery. So that was uh, the post incantation with Jim Rowe. Total cheers to that. That's what I'm saying. And then um, I got to see them, luckily, a few times, which was cool. Disciples of Mockery, we put out a record with them, too. Uh, we're going to try to bring one of their records back, actually, because I, I have, like, hundreds of covers, dude. If you guys want to support the channel or support the show in any way, shape, or form, which would be cool. If, uh, Undergang, I mean, if, uh, Vulcan's not your thing, we have Undergang shirts, too. And Questrum. So we made a couple styles of Undergang long sleeves and short sleeves. There's tank tops on the website and ringer tees, hooded shirts, etc. So if you want to support the show, uh, I appreciate if you bought a shirt or something. We're going to have some death metal podcast ones eventually, but if you guys want to cover your arms <laughs> and uh, buy a shirt, that'd be cool, man. It would be support for the show and uh, it helps me, man, I guess. So, yeah. So the, uh, so the Disciples of Mockery, we sell shirts from them too. So buy some shit. Buy, buy from what, everything I'm showing you, man. Like, go to these labels at the very thing. The website is necroharmonic.com or necroharmonicbigcartel.com. So it's necroharmonic.com if you guys want to check it out. That's my distro site now. So, like, we're doing, like, a distro mix with the record label. And then uh, Big Cartel, necroharmonicbigcartel.com is more of just mostly the label, I guess. But check out the website, and uh, it's the best way to support us. Because I don't take super chats or money or all that stuff. I'm here to freaking basically spread the message of death metal. And I want to spread it through my products and not to so much through, like, donations. <laughs> so we got a few more to go through. Thank you for everyone that's been tuning in, man. There's a lot of fucking people watching this. So I'm, you know, kind of flattered in a way that you guys would even give two fucks about, like, you know, and also we're going to talk in the end too about, um, and I got some shit to give away. We're going to talk in the end about, uh, you know, what you guys, like what your favorite labels are. If you want to start throwing the names out there too, I don't mind throwing them on the screen too. So let's go to this one I thought was a cool one. Unholy Domain Records. They're based out of Italy. Um, they have some of their newer releases, uh, Death Fucker, uh, they put out the Transgressor on tape, uh, pr Protrusion, uh, release, uh, Waco Jesus, the, uh, Destruction of Commercial Scum. It looks like they put out an Entity, Cadaveric, Necrogry, and Tape also. They put out, like, a, they'll put out, like, an eclectic mix of, like, new death metal and old death metal they got the morbius grave in there reaping death i think it says from france transparent lust and that, like again i'm gonna say it again like i've said six times tulsa doom behind the curtain of these releases there's a bunch of additional releases and unholy domain has put out a lot of really tight releases i think they put out demigod they put out like some other finished death metal Rodell Records, uh, Necroharmonic, Dark Descent, Hells, Puke and Vomit. Yeah, Puke and Vomit, I forgot. Head Split and Havoc, cool, man. Yeah, I think they put out the Cemeterian tape. I've, I've become a non-American and self-accustomed to pronounce Undergang as Untergunder. I mean, you're probably saying it right. I'm not. I got some vinyl from Necroharmonic years ago, Intermint, Disciples of Mockery, Crematory. Thank you, man, appreciate it. You might see some of that stuff popping out again, dude. Head split. Fuck, man. So much cool shit. Head split is amazing, bro. Uh, got your fun. You got your eyes on Necroharmonic. Appreciate it. Thank you, man. So, Untergang. Help Roy's metal fun. Dude, in a way, yeah. Because I don't... I mean, most of the stuff I'm showing, I don't own. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll download or listen to some stuff, too, for free, obviously. Just like anyone else. I, and some of the stuff I do it right on here with the rest of you guys, so that way we could all talk about it and shit. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing, man. This is a fucking just for fun. And it's cool that, like, we could all, like, commune, and if you want to chat, you chat. If you want to lurk, you lurk. I don't care, you know? And if people get into the labels and the music, that's what counts in the big picture for me because I think these are good labels. There's, you know, they put heart and soul into what they're doing, so, like, in a way, 
you know, it's not easy to, you know, navigate through like a lot of bands and a lot of business stuff over like some releases and layouts and all graphic artists, music masters and who owns this and that like over like really not much money, you know, or because this is just an underground level thing, you know? So it's like, it, it you're not talking about like a huge business thing. From an outsider's point of view, you might think a record label is some huge fucking business thing, but it's not. Like it's, it's like it's it's sometimes it's really a fucking hand to mouth thing, man. So you know, like if, if you go to Primitive Recordings, the store, you know what I mean. You might just be just, you know, fueling their next release or their next print cartridge, anything, dude. You know, like that's just that's how this fucking works. So basically, um, here's a couple uh, interesting and good ones. Put out a lot of good releases. Profound Lord Records, who were uh, definitely movers and shakers, you know. I mean, they got um, Antichrist Siege Machine as one of their new releases. Um, Crucimentium, that new Crucimentium is a mind blower. Uh, Left Cross. You know, in the part in the past, they put out Dizma, uh, La, La Crane. They put out Evokin, um, Apparition, uh, Gray Skies Fallen. Now, this label, they seem like they put out stuff that, like, you know, they're pretty consistent as far as a, a good record label. You know, they put out pretty consistent stuff. So, like, you can, um, you could say that, you know, some of the stuff is definitely, uh, you know, consistent. Internet's gay and ruins things by a lot of ways. Hail Metalhead, Internet Connection, Love Dudes, Hail Joaba, L Necron, Roy, Mordant Red. That's what's up, man. J Dog. I've had the uh, Gorman Inter, in, uh, the Ending Quest reissue, Necro Harmonic from 2004. Yeah, definitely, dude. That, we were the first person that put that out, like mega eons before people even knew or talked about uh, Gormant. Yeah, I have killer history and stories. That's because I lived it, basically. So that's why maybe me coming on YouTube, I'm not coming on here to brag. I'm coming on here just to talk, basically, you know? Just to spew out knowledge that might be unheard. A little occult. There's a lot of occult behind Necroharmonic. And the sucky thing is, like... Just like occult knowledge, I can't tell everything, man. And sometimes I have to, you know, keep I have to keep some of my occult knowledge behind the curtain, man. That's just the way it goes. And that has nothing to do with the flags. It just has to do with occult knowledge, man. You know, like you just don't tell everything you know. And then, you know, I want to I want to put a light on the death metal scene. So that's the main goal of doing the stupid fucking show. I hate talking on camera. I just want to, you know, I just want yeah, death metal oral history. Maybe if you call it that and that's what it is, then that's what it is. Because I don't want to, there is no, there's nothing bragging, telling cool stories in the underground. Okay. So, I mean, yeah, I don't, like, I'm not on here to brag about, like, going to see Carcass or some shit in 1990. I just want to talk about death metal and you guys are part of it, man. You guys are part of it. So it's not just me. And if it wasn't for the chat, I would just be talking to my fucking self, dude, if you really think about it. If you know, you know, too. And then, you know, as growing up, too, I'll just say this as a little preface. I basically ran the streets from a certain age. So every dime I had was spent on metal and music and records and shirts and pins and buttons and patches. And there was no patches, actually. Markers and spray paint cans. I would, you know, like, so I was, con I would be like towns over on my bicycle buying a record in the fucking rain with whatever fucking dollars I collected from my fucking goddamn newspaper route or whatever. So it kept me out of trouble though. So I spent my entire youth just doing stuff like that. And then it just cascaded into some kind of hobby to a lifestyle thing. So, you know during that period of time it was easy for me to find things to do or go places because i was not scared to go to another state 
or travel around with a band with no fucking money practically or you know what I mean maybe the little bit of money I did have it's like oh you guys are going to Montreal I'll go with you you know and then I had a good time I barely spent shit you know sometimes I spent more sometimes I got fucking you know shaken down by a customs agent other times I got into a fight other times I got to sit and dead in a fucking you know killing addictions garage while they rehearsed you know phlegm played a show or something so it's like you know it was me just moving around going to some of the early like michigan death fest too and day of death you know so like the, the you know the memories that are behind that there's dudes that get older and then they're like oh i don't remember <laughs> you know and i'm just like listen i was drinking then and smoking and all that shit so like how come i can friggin remember i don't remember you know like give me a break you know fucking remember you're 52 and i remember the world before the internet <laughs> so there's you know someone older than me even a uh, majority of what brings is better anything worldwide and very humans it, you know what and making these pen pals across the the world was helpful so writing a letter to japan was some next level fucking shit you know or even just belgium or something it would it would be like some kind of I don't know, man. It was like some kind of charge. It was cheaper. It was like a dollar, 50 cents, two dollars. I don't even know where I got the money for that, dude. I don't know where I got the dollars and two dollars to write letters to fucking Belgium and shit. Waiting for the book would be Rad Reed. So in time, we're talking about it right now. Respect what people are you doing. FP, El Necron, JD. All, uh, yeah, definitely, dude. Real respect. Been looking for this show for fucking ages. Cool, man. Uh, I'm glad that we all bring it like that because basically we all come from kind of the similar, a similar schools. I mean, I'm probably the most traveled out of the bunch. Next, Necron next, and then FP last. So like you know, I don't know. FP did some travel too, but you know, like I like I would go to everything. Like anything that Incantation did in the early days, I was there. Like everything, everything except the very first show was at the second show. Because the very first show was an open mic night, so I wasn't, I didn't know then, I didn't even know them then. But everything after that is when I met them, and then I went to every show after that, like every show, probably until they went on their first tour with Entombed or Pungent Stench or something. So and even some of the Pungent Stench and Entombed shows, I went to some of those. But then after that, they had to leave, and I had to go to fucking work, basically, like a regular ass motherfucker, you know. I always look for forward to uh, to the relapse record sale section on the resound catalog. I remember that all kinds of EPs, cassettes, CDs, LPs for three to six dollars. I built a decent collection from that. That's an awesome comment, man. Thank you, Vesuvius Corpse Flower, because there was yeah that was a pretty slamming ass section, dude. That resound magazine was also pretty slamming. So we did profound lore. This is like a little Jeopardy thing. Maggot Stomp Records are still banging it. So they put out Sanguasugabog and a lot of bands that got bigger over time. You know, they put out pretty fucking consistent product, dude. You're snuffed on sight. Some of their stuff is going a little more hardcore and death metal, I would say, too. Fulci are total death metal, though. Corpse Pile... Mutilation Barbecue, Tomb Sentinel, Sensing to Die, um, Snuffed on Sight. They had two releases on them. Dying Remains, Nuclear Remains. And then their back catalog with the body box and all that stuff. Magic Stomp is has a lot of good shit, man. They had a lot of good releases. Especially if you kind of like a mid, mid-tempo, not mid-tempo, but like a mid-paced... You know, like a death metal that's, you know, some some slam kind of shit. But then they had some regular death metal shit. Little, you know, they saw them move them a little towards a little bit of hardcore stuff. I don't know if people call it deathcore, but no, I don't think... It didn't seem like it really went to that spot, you know? I spent a lot of money with Slap a Ham back in the 90s. Definitely, dude. They were fucking tight. They were tight. 
I have a terrible memory at 35. I can't remember most of my life. It's a blessing and a curse. I blame it on the anxiety mind and excessive booze. I don't know, man. I mean, I did all that stuff too. Gentrified death metal is what it's called. I dig a, pay, a mid pace slam death heavy. Sanguine nut is a good <laughs> is a good pile of shit. <laughs> I mean, Sanguine Sukabog, you know, they they uh, they helped stand up some part of the death metal scene just a little bit that wasn't being stood up, you know. So you have to admit you have to give it to them for that because they put a renewed uh, like kind of like a little bit of renewed. You know, there's the shitbag band out there doing their fucking shitbag thing. Their music is uncompromising. You know what I mean? And then they go out and they play their fucking shows and eventually they get a little bigger, a little bigger, a little bigger. And if anyone tells me, like, oh, you know, they're whatever. Dude, those guys put in fucking work, man. They're away from their fucking families, girlfriends, all that shit. And they're out fucking playing fucking two, you know, 150 fucking shows in one fucking year. Like, I dare you to fucking do that. Good luck. Like, it's a difficult job, obviously, to do that. But, I mean, and also they're playing their merchandising game good. People say, you know, shirt band. But, I mean, I think all these bands are shirt bands, just to be honest. So, anyway. <laughs> let's go back to some regular-ass shit. This was a cool one, I thought. And they put out cool releases. Seeds of Doom uh, Records. They're out of the Netherlands. So they recently put out the Cystic. And then they put out Negative Prayer, Putridarium. Um, uh, let's see. They put out Dizma, the Graveless Remains on cassette. Uh, they put out that Phantom Magos uh, on cassette, I believe. Uh, that was also put on by Carbonized Records, even though it wasn't on the front page. Um, let's see what else here. This was a good label, man. Slime Lord, uh, Contamination, uh, Moss Contamination release. So this seems this is like a what I would consider like an up and coming good record label too. Seeds of Doom. The dude Steven is super cool. Um, they put out good releases. Um, you know they just they put out tight stuff, dude. There's always gonna be a tent pole that brings bands in. Exactly, dude. Props to young dudes in Sanguasukabak. Thank you, man. I would like I, I like to see a little love. Third time's a charm. Do you like any new standard elite? Just the old stuff, dude. We, we we mentioned it earlier, and I only really like Vomit Remnants. Basically, that's the only band I like. Haven't chimed in on the chat. Cool, man. Cheers, Roy. Down in beers or friends? Scoping the show, man. Awesome, dude. What's up to your friends, man? Shots, 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 shots. <laughs> you guys better be playing beer pump uh, or whatever, doing a shot for Death Metal Podcast. Um, so I had a pretty reckless life and I didn't bother talking about it. Anyway, nobody would believe it anyway. Exactly. And that's how this is too. But the thing is, like, I channeled some of my energies into this, basically. Not this show, but this show is like the epitome of like the end result of the fucking mayhem I mean I just I just you know it seems easy to talk about the stuff because I lived it you know and that's it if you lived it and then no you never talked about it to anybody except like your significant other or some fucking close friend you know there's stuff too with my close friends I might not say on here because you know front man a sanguasugabog front in another band called limb splitter brutal fucking shit yeah I know of them limb splitter also, Volcano, they do like a hardcore band. I haven't heard them, but I like the name. <laughs> I like the logo, too. It's like some fucking, what do you call it? Looks like I'm some fucking, uh, on some, uh, next level, like, graffiti shit. Here's the label, like, a, um, I think they had gone away, but came back. I could be wrong, but they seem like they've been making, like, I get a Bandcamp email from them every fucking week, dude. Ever everlasting spew records. So some of the new releases, um, you have like Organ Dealer from New Jersey. I see on there, and uh, Ember Death, uh, Fossilization, the newer one, Seraphic Entombment, um, uh, Review Butte, 
Nuclear Tomb is on there. Uh, Volcrin Rites. So Everlasting Spew Records from Italy. Uh, f I see um, Pharmacist on there. No, not Pharmacist. Uh, Festergore. So this label has a lot of tight releases beyond this show page, too. If you go back with them a little bit, you can kind of find some really good stuff. They've been around for, for quite a long time, if I'm not mistaken. They might have had a little hiatus, if I'm not mistaken, too. But, I mean, if they didn't have a hiatus, they started going hard as hell in the last so many years. Spew has got some rippers. And if you guys want to check out any of this stuff, basically, you all you have to do is just go to the fucking website and, um, you know, look and listen, man. That's it. I'm showing all band camps, so this stuff's completely available. So, you know, like, this is, you know, to me, it, it's a place where you learn about death metal. And if you focus in on death metal, black metal, grindcore labels on, say, Bandcamp, just one place, not even Spotify, not even YouTube, then you can, you know, just listen to the sound samples. If you like the stuff, buy a cassette, buy a record, get a download. I don't even fuck with the downloads. I'll buy cassettes because I'm cheap. Uh, I don't even buy all the cassettes. I just listen to some of the music. I download, like, a couple things here and there if it's a single track or something. I, you know, I'll buy a record here and there. I'm not a ridiculous buyer or anything. But it's a good it's a good resource place, you know? Like Discogs. Like Metal uh, Archive. So it's but it's like a it's like an audio uh, resource. Also, we're not paid by them or anything, and we get no love from them. I'm not on the featured anything. Necroharmonics never got. We paid to be on there. Uh, Spew is gonna put out Ectavoid, underrated, and yeah, Ectavoid's awesome. They're cool people too. So tonight, um, this record label edition, we got a few more. I want to say thank you to the people that have been watching too. Tony, Sick Nick, uh, Jeff Chapman, Jesus Drinks Jeff Fuel, Aaron, uh, Jason Donahue, um, who else? Vesuvius Corpse Flower. Thank you, man. Awesome uh, commentaries. Anyone who's been throwing crazy commentaries, man, I appreciate it because Mike Violate, Human Brisket, No Balone, um, you guys, you know, you guys are a part of the show in a way that you don't know. Because, like, if, without you guys, like, what am I, you know, what do I have to talk about? <laughs> I mean, I can bounce off the chat a little bit, and then, you know, Gutbag always knows the sickest and lowest, you know? And then uh, I saw Alexis in here earlier. Thank you. Appreciate you. Um, been seeing those posts up there. Death Evocation, definitely appreciate you. You know, Volt of... Uh, uh, Nicholas uh, Volchek, uh, Volta Volchek, fucking rules, awesome collector. Jurgen D. Nocte, appreciate you, man. Like anybody, Thunderkick Willie, appreciate it, man. Like, I, I'd like to see different names, and it's fun to, you know, it's fun to uh, just, Justin, always, like, um, you guys just, you know, always fucking do it, man. And I hope that, you know, I am bringing some kind of fucking, you know, crazy information here. And that's why I did show, like, some boot bootleg type records and some off markety shit, too. I could have went crazy with that, just to be honest, because that's really my, that's my rabbit hole. So, you know, I just, I went on, I just, I, I go on here and, um... <laughs> <just> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Jason Donovan. My bad, not Donahue. 20k subs and 40 solid in the chat yeah i mean it seems like it's been 40 50 people that have been rolling in lately so and it says 56 but number doesn't mean much to me <laughs> i what matters is the fucking show basically you know like i hate this fucking i hate talking on camera man it comes easy for me but the thing is like it fucking sucks Here's a cool distro <laughs> uh, that uh, puts out a lot of shirts. They're from um, Indonesia or, or Japan or something. Fat Tub of Lard Records. They put out always slamming death metal, you know, like fucking complete slimy slamming death metal shit. Kind of like Brutal Mind, but maybe even a little darker down a darker chamber. This guy Larry runs it. I um, can't remember his band name. 
but basically, yeah, fat tub of lard records. You know, it's uh, yeah, the show is growing now. We're at two thousand. Just got off with the green, ordered the green undergang shirt, Roy. Get off the stream and ship it out now. Well, it might get made quicker than you think, actually. So, I mean, this, uh, the, uh, today it's my birthday. Exactly how you want to spend it. Watching some DMP. That's what I'm saying, brother. That's awesome, dude. F fucking Phil's birthday. We should sing a song. So, fat tabalard records, Phil. <laughs> this ain't the Houston tapes right here. This is some slimy ass fucking Japanese stuff, if I believe. And um, they do official licensed, like, slam death metal, grind, gore stuff. This is the first place I saw making, like, socks and shit. But, you know what? You want to make beach towels, socks, and cups? And there's going to be people that buy them? Hats? I think hats are cool. Jerseys, snapbacks, shorts. You know, beyond t-shirts, vinyls, and hoodies. Do it, man. You know, like, if people are out there wanting a fucking... Uh, fucking I don't know, like some anime fucking, you know, septic fucking gore scene on their fucking coffee cup, then who am I to judge? I think that I think this has been a pretty solid and consistent label for X amount of years, and obviously they're still around now, so, you know, they, you know, they definitely uh, repped it. We're going to get to the section where you guys talk here, too. Let's see here. Transition Loss Records? This is not one I'm completely familiar with, but I hear their name thrown around a lot. So, I don't know if there's any fans that you got uh, Transition Lost Records on here. I see they did put an All Out War release on there. And then, um, it seems more like, a, you know, like a, like a hybrid y kind of death metal mixed with like hardcore ish label, but I could be wrong. I mean, if there's any fans of this uh, label. Just out of curiosity, um, you know, I hear their name. Th I've seen their name thrown into the mix a few times, saying that the releases are tight. So, you know, to me, I felt that maybe they should be shown and, um, you know, talked about a little bit. Roy, I super dig how obviously non-elitist metalhead you are. It's clear to know. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not, that's. I am a completely non-elitist, basically. Like I don't. You know, beyond me showing other labels, like I had said in the beginning, when you weren't on here. You know, like, there's a few things I'm going to show on here, too, of labels I'm not even friendly with. But the thing is, it doesn't matter, because I they are part of the fucking scene. So, like, it's stupid for me not to talk about them, man. Like, you know, that's foolish. I want to, you know, I want to just, I want to spread information. So, like, that's the way we do it here on Death Metal Podcast. I've ordered a lot of stuff from Doom from Obscurity Records, Crucifixion Texas, Abominate, Disgorge Sweden. Okay, Hot Stove. I know them, Illinois. You know what? Let's go into this, man. Let's do this for Death Metal Podcast. I want to see you guys throw some words and throw some stuff in here about record labels or something from the last couple years. You'll know you supported it because you either listen to it on YouTube, Spotify, which is hard to tell where the record label is. Bandcamp, YouTube, you know, like, I don't know, IG, you follow them, you watch what's going on, record labels, bands that are on the record labels or supporting these record labels. So start throwing some stuff at in the chat if you could, and I'll throw it on the screen because I want to know what you guys like, and that's what this show was about. What are your favorites? Because in a way, I, I, I'm, I'm on a learning journey here too. So if you even if you have a, your own record label, you want to support that and just say something on here to say blankety blank my record label, throw it in there, man, and that way you guys can uh, you know get a little shine, you know. Or if you have anything else that you want to plug or whatever, I'll just show as much as I can here. So what's your favorite record labels, guys? I really need to know, man. So just bring bring on. Um, you know, what you think is, like, your favorite record labels. I want to see, you know, if, if you guys uh, can throw some names and some stuff that we haven't talked about so far in this. Which I did see multiple times. Uh, Doomed by Obscurity Records, which was kind of a cool one. So, can anybody talk to any uh, record label stuff? 
Imperium Collapse from Chile is a good one. On, uh, and uh, Iron Bonehead, definitely. They almost made it to the cut, actually. Tank Crimes, 3-1, uh, and I uh, used to be a big-ass relapse guy. Awesome, dude. Comatose, yeah, I wish I had added them, actually. Comatose is a killer underground label, not sure if mentioned. I really wish I had added them, actually. Century Media, cool, definitely, definitely, definitely. The uh, Iron Pegasus, they're old, though. I don't know if they're fully, uh, are they fully operational? Uh, Dark Symphony still does stuff, definitely. Dark Symphony reissues are great. PKR, okay. Displeased was a good one. Extreme Repulse and Drown, definitely. Check out yesterday's episode. I showed some old Drown flyers. Um, I'll give a credit for Third Man for putting out sleep stuff. <laughs> Severed Records, definitely, man. FOAD, yes, FOAD Records has put out some dark, decent shit. Dark Descent, we mentioned. Seeds of Doom, we mentioned. Peaceville puts out, still puts out quality shit. Dark Throne, Autopsy. Thank you, Death Horror, Gore Pain. Invictus, Goat Throne, Dark Descend. Repulse Records, they're, they're long extinct. So, any, uh, like, Dark Blasphemies? What else you guys got? Bring on your record label stuff. Jack White, you happens to be a huge sleep fan. Listenable, cool. Iron Fortress, Empty Casket Tapes. Yeah, I forgot about them. SPV, I don't know if they put out recent releases. They did used to put out the old Sodom releases and stuff. Nuclear War Now, we talked about them. Awakening Reckoners from China. Yep, Head Split, Head Split, Head Split. We spoke on them. Caligari, fuck. I see, I knew I would forget one. That's a good one, man. Definitely check out Caligari Records, dude, from Florida. The Ron Band Camp, they put out banging releases. Definitely check them out. Goat Throne was mentioned. My buddies, uh, plug to my buddies' uh, label Empty Pit Records from Madison, Wisconsin. Definitely. Nuclear War Now, Necroharmonic, and Obliteration are your top three. Thank you. Uh, Raw Skull Records, excellent one, definitely. Explicit, uh, pathologically explicit. Morbid Metal Records. Rotted Life, we spoke about. Uh, Caligari has heaters for sure. Earache, back in the day, and Relapse. Carbonized Records, we spoke to. Solitude, Rotted Life, we spoke to. Grind Destroy, yeah, I've seen that. Seen that out in the wild. What else you guys got? This is the, this is the learning journey right here, you know. We want to we want we want other people to see this so that way it's like you want to plug something that you think like fuck dude, I'm like you know, I'm look around and say like all right, well these are my records and this is my cassettes, you know. Like I pulled something out before to show and I don't even know what the fuck it is. But basically like, you know, I was like, "Ah, oh, yeah, I should show this cassette on there, you know." Just some random ass shit. Unholy Domain, we mentioned on here. Uh, nuclear Blast and Wild Drags. I, I, I don't know if I did. I mention Nuclear Blast. Sorry. It was on there. Avant Garde, yeah. Yeah, they were tight. I think they still do stuff. Darkness Shall Rise, definitely cool. Armageddon Label, I was thinking about them too when I set this up. Northern Heritage. Morbid Chapel, definitely. Tony. Combat. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if they put anything new. Satanic, Skinhead Propaganda, Wild Rags. They haven't put anything new. Durkada, uh, Drakkar. These are all tight labels, though. I mean, Wild Rags is tight. No Colors. Okay, yeah. Drakkar, too. I mean, they, they've been consistent if they're still 100% label. HHR Goddamn Ohio. What else you guys got? Distros. Any other labels you guys want to shout out to say like, hey, that's my friend's label, or hey, that's in my van camp collection, or hey, wrong again records. Yep, I know that one too. Any new, any new stuff? Things you saw in the last couple weeks? Redstream, they they went under. I don't think they were op. Well, they might be operational as a distro only. 
Anyone say Bayern Bonehead? One person did, but I was going to actually add them to the list, too. Osmos. Osmos. Everything else there is deceased, almost, except for Nuclear War Now. What else you guys got? Bring on your record label favorites. Earache and Listenable? I mean, the reissues are pretty amazing, aren't they? That crowdfunding stuff's a little bizarre to me, but... Necroharmonic? All right, thank you. Metal Mind, High Roller, and Back on Black with the Prestige uh, reissue labels, definitely. We mentioned Sewer Rot tonight. I gave, I try to give all the underground uh, labels a shine, Evan. I, I gave Sewer Rod a shine. Caligari Records, they were the one I forgot, actually. Sony? <laughs> hey, man, if Sony wants to sponsor me, you can do it. I'll put my little Sony logo up here. Dark Descent, yep, we talked about them. They're a sick label. Definitely Black Death fits well with this episode. It's all good, brother. Goat Grind Records, yeah, I forgot about them. They're cool. They were definitely put out those old devourment picture discs. Cold Meat Industry still around? Anyone can answer to that? Recently ordered from Haunted Hotel, Defiled Graves, and Deathgasm. Cool. Anyone remember Cyber Music? Dutch Death Metal, like Dissect Dusk? Yeah, I remember them. Half-Life Records, definitely. Rescued from Life Records, I didn't mention. Definitely worth it. Deathgasm, shout out to Evan from Deathgasm. Definitely was a huge uh, part of Necroharmonic, actually. What else you guys got? Anything else? So let's get to the um, Dread Records. Shiver, I think they're deceased. And Dread Records still pretty busy with the cassette... Um, cassette releases hails hails to everyone that you know i mean this is the, this is our record label fucking dissect it was the shit this is our record label edition you know we're trying to um you know unbiasedly i forgot this one dissident tapes is worth checking out and uh who else did i forget here i thought i had a nuclear blast one but i guess i didn't yeah, I guess I just didn't download it. Dissident Tapes, man. They had good stuff. Darker Than Black. Let's see, who else? Sometimes you gotta figure out how to shut the shit the fuck off. So Darker Than Black Records put out some good stuff. Roadrunner. Impure Wedding? I don't know that one. Extreme Music. Coyote Records? Yeah, from uh, Russia. Evan March from Deathgasm is an awesome guy. Definitely, dude. What else are you guys' favorites? Elegy Records? Yeah, rest in peace. I know Rob pretty well. We used to, uh... The guys from Funebrum and uh, Bazagora, they lived in the same house as Elegy Records, so... I, I spent a lot of time around there. Black Sun, I think they're gone a long time. A Moribund Records, though, is still alive. Um, I don't know which Black Sun, but the old Black Sun is gone. But Moribund, shout out to Odin, the old goat. He's been around for a million years. Yeah, we talked about that nuclear war now. Eastern Blood. Darker Than Black. Uh, I, I, I didn't actually... I, I didn't... Even though, like, I don't, I don't support every band's politics, every label's politics, or every label completely, I still did talk about a few ones that I don't even support, and I even talked about two, one, two or three. I don't even know, just because people talk about them to me or talk about them out loud. So, I figure they would be worthy to be uh, shown on here, basically. Also, yesterday, if you guys are interested, I might as well plug this. We did an episode on old fanzines and old letters and flyers and all kinds of crazy ass shit so if you guys want to check this out this was um this was a retrospect of uh 1988 to 94 and i basically just talked about like that era of death metal we played very very little music and you know we uh talked about old fanzines and like old demos and just just cool old stuff Stuff from that I had from my own personal collection. 
So if you want to go back, yesterday I did an episode on a Friday night. American Lion Productions? That's what's up, dude. Let's take this banner down. American Lion, dude. They were tight. Meet 5000 Records for me? Yeah, they were, dude, they were tight. Spectral Voice? I think we, we spoke on them, I believe. I meant to, I meant my, I, I meant my old band Somnolence was released by Darker Than Black, not Death Metal, unfortunately. Dark Recollections has some killer Mexican reissues. Yeah, they're cool. They were cool. Rot and Roll Records. Anyone else want to throw some shit? Those headbangers? Yeah, we spoke on them. What about recent? Like, any any devotees to any tapes lately or records? I saw FOD in there. These labels are... Some of these labels you guys are mentioning are extinct. F FDAO Rodovit is a good German label. Excellent one. And someone said Self-Made God earlier today, too. And they're also a cool label. And also, um, Anesthetic Death from UK is a sick label. They've been supporting Necroharmonic for many years. Um, who else? There's been quite a, you know, there's a, quite a few good uh, Finnish labels and German labels. Morbid Generation Records, a cool label. Um, you know, some of the stuff we said. So you guys are going back to the old school. The old French labels and Thrash Records with Wombath and Convulse. You guys like the old shit. I noticed the fans on here, you guys are all into the old fucking shit. A lot of people are, which is kind of cool. The, um, the scene was different, man. You know, like, a little. So, I mean, the, you know, I could understand why people are very nostalgic. I tried to, I tried to take the focus of this uh, episode and just push it a little onto the last couple of years, if you guys noticed. Just to, just to put people up to... You know, people that are into death metal and black death, just to be like, kind of like, oh shit, like who's that, you know? Or, or I didn't know where to get that release, so now I kind of figured out like I should, you know what I mean? Like now I know where to get. I heard of that band. I had, I heard of Black Curse. I liked their song, or I like, you know, I heard this release, but I never knew where to get that, you know? So that's this is what the uh, the episode's all about. Corpse Gristle, yep, we spoke to them. You love the OG shit? Well, this show, I mean, is as OG as it gets, I think. Who put out Dead In? Uh, Corpse, uh, Corpse Gristle and also Severed put out Dead In, if I'm not mistaken. Bizarre Lepros. There you go. Roman and Bizarre Lepros Productions. Amazing. Pulverized Records. United Guttural. Yeah, United Guttural is extinct. Bones Brigade Records is still in existence. Yiddish <laughs> Rotten Goreville Records? Is that a real one? Uh, Sadism Merch in Thailand? Okay. Cool, man. I love... Dude, I'm loving this. Bring it on. I like to hear about obscure stuff. Like Sadism Merch in Thailand. This guy I had... I was with this guy in high school made beats for Megan the Stallion. He gets seven grand a month for royalties. Yeah, man. Hook me up. <laughs> uh, United Guttural with fancy LPs and dozens of small record labels Carbonized Records we talked to already um, a lot of labels there's more labels than there are fans but the fans are mostly in here because beyond Aaron from Goat Throne and beyond I don't know I don't see too many record label owners in this chat actually if there was, like, they, I didn't see too many at all, just to be honest. I saw people talking about record labels, but I, the only person I saw in here, I think, was Aaron, maybe. Razorback Records, forgotten by time, but established in the sound. Definitely they did. And they also make a horror magazine now, and several horror books, and the Death Vomit book, and all that stuff, so... That shit is sick! And the Uniforce book... And, um, you know, whatever horror magazine things they're working on, Evil Speak, those are good. Flip, um, 
just pick any medical reference and odd and add a record label to the end so let's play a song and then uh, I'll let you guys think for a minute I'm just gonna go take a whiz let's see what we got for the freaks here I always have to play something that had like no copyright infringements on it because it's like so annoying this fit shows the show's not annoying just the the guiding through like the YouTube algorithm with like the music is like fucking bullshit <laughs> um let's see what we got here I gotta I have to I have to take a, a whiz and then you guys can think about all the death metal records that you wanted to cop
so <laughs> that was good man that's the best comment i've seen in a while dude that's the march march simpson vocal so we're gonna give away a copy of the cd and then um i'm gonna do a contest on here so you got to pick out a number and you guys know how i do this i write it down randomly and then we pick from a, a set of numbers and then basically it's going to be, you know, I see only 50 people in here, so I'll do up to like a hundred and no, no, it's not, it's not by a hundreds. So you'll see. So it's going to be, let's see. All right. I got the number. So you have to pick a random number between 300 and 399. And you could win this Muco Purulin CD us only though for shipping, please. I can't ship it to another country for free. So, US only, uh, win a free mucopyrrolin CD. You just heard it. Pick a number, man. Between 301 and 399. I'll, I'll list it. Three, nope. Only pick once, too, please. At first. Nope. Nope. Nope, nope. This brings out the lurkers, I noticed. Good luck with the winner. CD's badass, exactly. Nope. Seven? No. This is between 300 and, um, 301 and 399. I gotta make it confusing. Nope, nope, nope. Will we find a winner? Nope, nope. No winners yet. Seeing one get a little close. <laughs> I see the same people asking. 255? This is between 301 and 399. Nope. This time I'm actually showing the numbers. 399? Nope. I wrote it just on a random ass piece of paper right here. 388, nope. Win this Muco Purulin CD, and then we're going to talk about some other doom shit. Nope. Give the lurkers a turn. <laughs> No one else lurking this show that wants to throw a number at? I'm not showing any more of the ones that uh, like put it like five times. Hold the paper up again. <laughs> I did, man. It was backwards. Nope. I'll show you the number once you win. No one said it. One person came within one number of it, and I'm not going to say who it was. Because that ain't going to, you know? This is why I have to make fucking shit confusing out here, too. Because if I said 1 to 100, it's really easy. Like, nope, nope. <laughs> I think John Rand ran out of <laughs> ran out of choices. <laughs> nope, nope, nope. Three sixty-two. All right, I see a lurker. Bring out the lurkers. You didn't win it, but oops, somebody coming close. There's somebody that came super close. I'm gonna watch that. I'm gonna watch that ticker now. Where's the winner? Where is the winner? The first person that says it. <laughs> Pretty close. I saw again almost. It's getting closer. 311 sucks. 
It's getting closer, man. I saw two people come like within two numbers of it. Damn, man. I didn't know it'd be hard to give away a CD this hard. That looks familiar. Oh, somebody hit it. John Ran, 347. You made 60 requests and you won. Since you wrote the number 45 times, you are the winner of this Muco Purulent CD. So send this is the winner. Um, <laughs> this is like lab rats. <laughs> So, John Ran, you're the winner of the Mikko Purulent CD. So, you won tonight, um, Hales. And then you, the number was, uh, I'm going to show it on the screen, too. 347. See? In the center there. So, this is unbiased win. I can't put everyone's number in a wheel, so. Congratulations. Exactly, dude. Congratulations, Charles. John Ran, you're going to love it. I won the golden ticket. <laughs> so tonight, yeah, this is um, this has been a good episode, right? I feel like we brought out a lot of stuff about record labels. Um, Leslie, it's over now. Um, I, I I think we brought out a lot of good stuff about record labels and then showed some of the releases. It was cool to get a lot of people's input at the end there. And then um, I seen some record labels that I'm interested to look at now a little bit. Thank you for people that are tuning in to, um, you know, support the show. I appreciate Send me your address, though, to necroharmonic at gmail.com. I'm not going to remember this ever, dude. Off, off anything outside the necroharmonic system, dude, is, like, impossible for me to remember. Plus, I remember you were dogging me for a piece of merch, too, anyway, so I'm definitely not going to remember your address. Um, the, uh, so necroharmonic.com, if you guys want to support the channel, um, if you want to throw a like and subscribe and all that stuff, you can appreciate, uh, the show. Uh, if you want to support necroharmonic, the best way to do it is through the website. We got a lot of shirts and a bunch of crematory ruin, some, uh, Evoken, a whole new line of Evoken shirts, uh, Necroharmonic shirts, Incantation, a bunch of shit. So tonight, um, you know, we did this record label edition, and I feel like, you know, we covered a good portion of the death metal scene, even within the chat and the talking and everything. And the big question of the night, yeah, was pretty much covered. I mean, we wanted to know who are your favorites, you know? I'm sad I didn't put Caligari up there, unfortunately. And hails to the chat tonight for everybody, man. Uh, did Roy, did you ever see old Nuclear Blast Revenant? Yeah, I've seen pre-Nuclear Blast Revenant. Always appreciate you, uh, Jesus Drinks Jeff Fuel. Uh, I, I hate it. I slacked on the Impetigo shirt. Yeah, the screen popped, actually. We'd have to make a new one or something. So tonight, uh, 366, exactly. I wanted to show two more things quick. My my music taste isn't just reserved to just death metal. So like these were two weirdo ones I had found real quick when I was pissing. So there's this band called Ibalus from um I think they're from uh Indonesia or something. They're a doom band. So check out this band, Ibalus. If you're looking for some scuzzy doom stuff, this is a good start right here. If anyone in the chat or whatever likes doom metal and, you know, wants it a little scuzzier, this band has a couple of good releases. So it's called Demonic Her. This is an older release, but really tight. And I had this weirdo one, too. Ill Bill. This is uh, La Bella uh, Medusa cassette. Obviously, I'm a cassette freak, so I copped this Ill Bill uh, cassette. You know, so my tastes are not just limited just to death metal. They, you know, I like Doom, I like death metal, grindcore, a little of everything. It's nice to, um, you know, it's it's nice to uh, not just be into one music, you know? That's why I have Electric Wizard Records and Demigod ones. Nothing wrong with Ill Bill? Yeah. What's wrong with Bill is a classic. So, like, I have, you know, I'm into death metal, and I'm into doom, and grind, and black metal, and everything. So, I like I like a smitten of everything. Rock music. I don't know. Like, you know, randomly, 
I've been listening to Judas Priest, not the new one, but old ones, and other stuff, you know. So tonight's record label edition, This I'm going to wrap it up. Um, I appreciate you guys for tuning in. Uh, some of you guys tuned in yesterday, too, to the other Death Metal podcast, which was uh, dedicated towards um, the old school, like, fanzines and stuff. So I'm, I'm glad to, um, next week on Saturday, check out an episode with, I don't have the flyer, but it's with Necron and with, um, with Mike Abominator. They're going to explore a deep world of black metal demos. So they've invited me on, but I'm not 100% sure I'm going to be on that. Um, so definitely check out the episode next week of The Witching Hour with Mike Abominator and Necron, where they're going to go over all these like old school, like old black metal demos, which should really be cool. So tonight, you know, I wanted to, I think we covered our basis. Um, did we, did we succeed together here on death metal podcast? This has been a good episode. Um, you know, went over a lot of record labels and I felt that it was like, you know, kind of semi-informative. It was semi-informative even for me, especially towards the end where people were just throwing names. Saw a couple things there that uh, now I'm going to look up. And um, even just doing the research for this was semi-informative just to learn about a couple labels that I didn't know they put that particular release out. So, you know, and if, if I don't buy it, I just listen to it, you know. That's the way I, I've been keeping it. You know, I don't, you can't buy everything. So like, but then if you find yourself, <laughs> if you find yourself listening to it repeatedly, you're probably going to buy it. You know, I do. So yeah, man, uh, Necron Abominator and Lord Fear. I don't know if Lord Fox will be there actually. So I'm going possibly to see a festival with a band who hasn't played in 22 years. So, um, I don't know if I'll be here. I don't even know if I'll be at that festival, so I don't know where I'll be. I, I just, I don't, I drift like the wind. That's why this show is semi, uh, you know. Yeah, Doom Metal is awesome. I, I love some good Doom. I drift around, so I don't want to say I'm going to be here and not be here and be here and not be here. Got to uh, check out a lot of stuff tonight. My wallet's going to hurt from this international shipping. <laughs> yeah fuck yeah dude so i think yeah i might hit a show and maybe we'll do some interviews while i'm there or something i don't think i'll go live from the show i think i saw you when i was at the undergang show you were in the chat you know roy in the space with the green fog exactly going to destroying texas cool is that next weekend so yeah um so we're gonna wrap it up though appreciate the support if you want to support the label directly um necroharmonic.com is the best way please throw some kind of whatever likes and all that fucking baloney shit um on the show and comments comments really is what drives the most so hope you guys like the music that we played i hope you enjoy you know this little journey down death metal lane and i hope that uh i made somebody's night good and hope you enjoy your beers and your family and your weed or whatever is legal or illegal or whatever you want to do i don't know uh, you know uh, basically you know the, the bottom line is in this big schematic music is what drives us all so you know i i we're all is super into music or we wouldn't even be here talking about it so I'm a fucking huge fucking music fan and I listen to it from end to asshole. So I wanted to go on here and just talk about record labels of the of the new, let's call it. And I think I pretty much accomplished touching a lot of them. So thank you for everybody tuning in and I'll see you guys around. If it's not next week, it'll be the week after. I'll see you, man. Thank you.